Hey now, it's Mike Gilbert, host of the Mike and JD Show, right here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Join JD by God Oliva and myself every Thursday night live on the Voices of Wrestling YouTube channel at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we stay up all night discussing all the hottest stories in professional wrestling. You can also check us out right here on the Voices of Wrestling podcasting feed or you can subscribe to the Mike and JD Show feed. Now, enjoy the show. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Here we go! You're listening to the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Welcome to episode 59 of the Emerald Flow Show. We're a podcast on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. You can follow us on X at Emerald Flow Show. And you can, if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five star review. And we're available on all your favorite podcast apps. And go to voicesofwrestling.com slash donate to donate to the show if you're feeling generous and that's greatly appreciated i'm dried i'm here with paul paul how are you feeling i'm feeling okay uh caught some sort of cold i guess at uh 16 carat but i'm almost back to 100 percent now did uh you hear from other people that were there that got sick uh i haven't heard from anyone else yet so i don't i mean but again it's a big event so these kinds of things happen. And it was just a normal cold. I actually took a COVID test that came back negative. Mm. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, everybody always seems to catch things whenever there's like some sort of weekend of wrestling. Oh, yeah. I mean, but I, I guess that's also kind of like we had that kind of stuff before COVID as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like it sure. always was like famous as like big convention where there's just like the con flu like going around where everyone gets sick. So. Mm-hmm. So we have to start off this week with some very sad news. Uh, Yutaka Yoshie passed away uh, after a show uh, in uh, for All Japan on March uh, 10th, I believe it was. Or And um, just he went back after the show. Like, he had his match. He re-teamed Ryu in a way against Hokuto Omori and Ryuji Sai. No, nothing happened in the match, apparently. Went backstage, was fine for a bit, and then said he felt sick, sick at the hospital, and passed away. Uh, it came out later that he passed away of like arteriosclerosis, heart disease, hardening of, hardening of the arteries. Uh, just about fifty years old, was going to celebrate his thirtieth anniversary in wrestling this year. He debuted in New Japan in nineteen ninety four, and I just thought this was very sad because I have well not followed all of Yutaka Yoshie's career, but I remember when I first saw Yutaka Yoshie, uh, he had somewhat of a bad rap because this would have been in like late 99, early 2000. And uh, he was getting quite the push at the card from Ricky Choshu. And he probably wasn't ready for that at that time. <laughs> and so he, uh, but I think he, I mean, eventually, I mean, he was never a super worker or anything like that. But I think once he started getting into like 2002, when he had his tag team with Tanahashi, and afterwards, I think he became a solid big man wrestler 
filled a, a very important role. He could be a hard hitter. He could do comedy. He was charismatic. And by all accounts, uh, he was very much loved by all of the other wrestlers. So, um, you know, this is one of those deaths that I, if you had told me before, like, I wouldn't think that it would be something, but it, like, it it hit me hard because this was a guy that was like there from when I started watching Puro. So I think that's why it sort of like has this effect on me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just simply tragic. I mean, it was still very young, like way too young to die. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can just kind of agree with you as well. I don't think it hit me quite that hard, but it was definitely like, I was like, oh, this is just awful as well. Like for like everyone else as well, that was like probably there as well. But it, I mean, I don't even know. Obviously, we don't know what happened backstage if people kind of knew that it was very serious or if they were just like, oh, yeah, just go to the hospital and get checked out or whatever. Right. But I mean, it, it, it's just an awful situation all around for everyone. And I know that Suwama on the next show, like came out to the ring with his picture mm -hmm. and they played his music and everything. And yeah, it, it's just an awful situation just all around. As you said, he seemed like a guy that was just beloved by anyone that like met him ever. Just, yeah, seemed like a great guy and just really no age for someone to die. Uh, Alan Foral did a great little uh, write-up that, well, he posted it on his Twitter and I retweeted it on our Emerald Flow Show account. It's also going to go up on the Torch, but we got a link to it in the Google Doc and he just put on, a bunch of Yoshie uh, recommendations, a lot of G1 Climax from like 2002, 2003. Um, and uh, I recommend all of those matches, but also uh, All Japan TV just put up uh, Yoshie and Tanahashi versus Taiokea and Jamal from 2005 <laughs> for the World Tag Team titles. And uh, I'd also recommend um, a couple of matches that he had in All Japan last year. Uh, first, would be on uh, in February of 2023. Uh, it was uh, Yuji Nagata, Yuma Anzai, Yutaka Yoshie versus the Voodoo Murders. This was in the Saitos and Suwama at that time. And I'd also mm -hmm. recommend um, from June 11th, 2023, Kento Miyahara and Yuma Anzai versus Yuji Nagata and Yutaka Yoshie. Both of those I thought were uh, really fun matches in sort of the last um, uh, sort of the last year of his career. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so I saw people asking this question and everything like that, but like he hasn't wrestled anything resembling a full time schedule since like 2017. No. Like he had seven matches in 2023, seven matches in 2022, but lest you think that was a pandemic. He had 13 matches in 2019 37 in, in 2018 and 66 in 2017 and that was sort of where he started to slow down really yeah he was very much on that like semi-retired schedule essentially yeah like similar to like someone like osamu nishimura where he really just has like had like a handful of matches mm -hmm. and just basically just popped in like every once in a while and yeah yeah, I mean, I assume maybe he had like a big show or something like planned for his like 30 year anniversary. Yeah. But yeah, just a shame. Just, yeah, very sad. And and to think about like, I mean, he, he was in that sort of weird sandwich generation after the third generation, but before um, like Tanahashi. So his contemporaries would have been like uh, Togi Makabe and Kazuyuki Fujita. <laughs> so that was a very yeah. <laughs> interesting sort of like era right yeah no i mean that that is kind of a well, i think curse can generation feels a bit strong but i mean it's definitely not like i don't think it's harsh to say that that's not really like the best generation the no, new japan dojo has ever put out well i mean but, like a lot of tanahashi's generation sort of aged some shit too like Kenzo says, true, true. I mean that and, true. true. <laughs> that one that had I, one glaring big standout. But what I was gonna say is, for all of those post third generation guys, and even the third generation ate shit too in 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 ways, like you know Suzuki left. Kenzo Suzuki left New Japan. Yutaka Yoshie left in two thousand six mm -hmm. to sort of like with Fujinami, which was interesting because that's when Choshu came back and Choshu had pushed him before, but 
maybe he felt like this company was in the shitter anyway. So he decided to leave. But that sort of like was for a lot of those guys that debuted in the 90s. The 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 business was so chaotic that they ended up in so many different places. Yeah. No, I mean, it was very chaotic. And I mean, New Japan got really lucky that they hit on Tanahashi. Yeah. Because who, like, obviously, like, once they brought on, like, once they, like, pushed Okada, that's when it, like, really went to another level. But if they didn't have Tanahashi to kind of, like, tight them over until that point, like, who knows what would have happened with that promotion. Well, Muto tried to get Tanahashi to jump to All Japan in 2002, too. Which, that's a very big, like, what if for history. Yeah. Like, I don't know if Tanahashi becomes the same level of star in no, probably All not. Japan. But it definitely massively hurts New Japan. And who knows if Bushiroad is even, like, interested in buying them if they don't have Tanahashi there. Uh, well, you probably would be looking at like nine time IWGP heavyweight champion Hiroki Goto, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, or, or they would have actually given the title to like Ishii because there was, would have been literally no one else there. That's true, too. So, uh, yeah, uh, rest in peace, Yutaka Yoshi. And so, Paul, uh, now's your time. What's the report <laughs> of 16 Carat? Uh, yeah, uh, I. Overall, I uh, like cold notwithstanding, I very much enjoyed the weekend. Uh, also got some time to kind of like explore like the surrounding like towns a bit as well because it's so for the people that don't really know Germany, like Oberhausen is located in this weird metropolitan area that is like one of the largest metro that no, that is the largest metropolitan area in Germany and one of the largest in Europe because there's like 13 million people there. But it's not like there's no major town there. It's just a bunch of medium sized towns that are just like clumped together around a bunch of former coal mines. So there's a lot of like interesting stuff like that to see there. I mean, that's what the Turbinhalle is as well, right? Like in Oberhausen. Like it's like a big old industrial building. And that's what makes it like really cool. Um, yeah. So that was really nice. And then the tournaments themselves. Uh, yeah, so I uh, actually got to have a quick chat with Wagner as well, which was nice. Uh, took a picture with him too. Uh, and uh, watched the tournament and then got a really big scare during Wagner's match. <laughs> yes. When, uh, so as I was mentioning, right? So the Turbinenhalle is a big old industrial building. So what that also means is that the floor... It's just straight up industrial grade concrete. And there is no mats. So Wagner does like a suicide dive to the outside. So like also oh, so first of all, so he's facing uh he's facing Peter Tihani, who would go on to go to the final uh in the first round. And Tihani, for the people that don't know, is like probably one of the biggest prospects in European wrestling right now. Like, he just has, like, all of the natural, like, wrestling talent. Like, he will probably get signed by, like, he, like if he gets brought in, if he wants to do Japan, he can probably get brought in by, like, any Japanese promotion. He'll probably pop up on US TV eventually. Uh, so, definitely a guy to watch. So, which already made me, like, okay, why are they putting this guy against Wagner because I was thinking Tihani was going to go far, which he did eventually. But then I was also like, well, they're not going to have the GHC champion lose in the first round. So they're having a match and it is actually a really good match. Like I was actually like ready to go like I think like four and a quarter on it. Like just a really good like back and forth contest. And then Wagner does a suicide dive to the outside. And they take a while to come up and then the ref kind of like checks on them and then the ref comes up and I see the ref kind of like touch his shoulder like like the, his own shoulder right and I'm like okay that's weird and then Wagner comes up and his like left arm is just on his side just not moving at all and I'm like oh shit uh, so they kind of like continue the match for a bit after that not not even for a bit. They literally just like go out onto the apron 
where then Tihani reverses a Death Valley driver into like a cutter, I think, which then causes Wagner to fall back to the outside, get counted out and lose. And then immediately the ringside doctor comes and like escorts him backstage. And I'm like, at that point, I'm like freaking out. I'm messaging Gerard and I'm like, oh my God, I think Wagner just like fucked up his shoulder <laughs> real bad. Uh, and I kind of like look at him at the merch table post show and well, his arm wasn't like, actually maybe that should have been a tip of a bit as well. His arm wasn't really in a sling. He kind of just like tucked it underneath his shirt basically yeah. and that was the other thing as well that I was thinking it was like okay like my hope at that point is like I hope this is just Wagner being really really good at selling because I was like well Tihani was gonna go far but then Wagner because they probably booked this months ago right because this yeah. was announced months ago before Wagner resigned and then I'm like, okay, but I feel like one of the things they gave Wagner to re-sign his contract is a GHC title reign. So now WXW is in the position where like, well, all of a sudden this match they booked months ago, which was Tihani versus Wagner in the first round, but Wagner loses. Now Wagner can't lose clean because he's the champion. He's a GHC champion. He can't lose clean anymore. But Tihani is a fake. So it's not like they can do some sort of like outside interference or some screw finish. So like your best solution at that point is like do an injury angle and do a count out, right? And lo and behold, on night two of the tournament, uh, <laughs> Wagner is eliminated. But who comes out with his brother, no less, Galeno Del Mal, who I didn't even know was going to be there. Oh, uh, nice. It's Wagner, and he, I don't know if he was selling still a bit or not, but he was still kind of like doing a bit of like he was still like like touching his shoulder, basically being like ah ah. And then he did the same dive he did on night one and just came up fine. And at that point, I was like, yeah, okay, this guy is just really good at selling. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, thankful. Yeah, I mean, it was always in the back of my mind that it was, but it. it that it could be a work, but it was quickly uh, proven to be so. Oh, thank God. That would have been something if he had actually injured himself. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, that would have been really fucked because then it would have been both people in the main event be going into it kind of like not at their best. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, another person though that I saw uh, was Yoichi as well. Uh, the so former Shiki in Amura. now? Ayuichi is looking really good. He has oh, leaned good. out a lot. Oh. Uh, yeah. He, well, he looks a lot leaner, at least. Yeah. Um, he Definitely also someone that comes across larger on screen than he is in real life. Mm. Because Wagner is legit tall. Like, Wagner is, like, one of those types of wrestlers where he's just one of the biggest human beings you've ever seen. Like, he's just, like, Big and wide, essentially, yeah. is the best way to describe Wagner. And Yoichi, uh, he's he's not that. He's not like, that Especially tall. now that he, yeah, especially now that he has slimmed down, he he looks a lot smaller. And he's definitely not that tall, yeah, because he was there with because there was basically like a Japanese contingent, yeah, at uh, uh at sixteen carat because Mochizuki Junior was also there. He wasn't in the tournament, but he was in the uh. Ambition uh, shoot style tournament, which that was that whole tournament was really fun. Like for anyone that likes shoot style, go watch Ambition. Um, and, and he was not that much taller than like Mochizuki Junior. Mm. Uh, but who, you know who also was there? Nikan Lee. Yes, that's which, right. She was refereeing which, some matches. Yeah, and she was actually at the merch table as well. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's that was, that was kind of random because I was because she like refereed a match between Gringo Loco and Mike DiVecchio. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like being like looking at the ref and I'm like, wait a minute. That ref looks really familiar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's done WXW before, has she not? Yeah. And I think also like I think she's moved to Europe as well. Because oh, really? I remember that was wasn't there something being said that she was like 
basically the go between for like a lot of European wrestlers coming to Japan. She's getting all those big Japan guy spots. Yeah. So I feel like that. I think that might have been one of the reasons why she left all Japan is because she's actually moved to Europe. Mm. Okay. I did not uh, necessarily. I remember seeing that somewhere. I don't remember where. Yeah. But I mean, hey, but yeah, overall, uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I'm probably going to go uh, for the tag team festival as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll see because that one's in October. And next time, because I did 16 carat two years ago, but I only did Ambition at night two last time. Mm -hmm. I did night one and night two and Ambition this year. And I'm thinking, okay, next time I'm going to go. And hopefully that's next year. I'm going to go for all three uh, nights that time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, was Irie there? Eerie, oh, yeah. Eerie, sorry. Yes, he was in the main event of night two. He was in the, in the title match. <laughs> and yeah, uh, Irie was there. <laughs> did you also give like over four stars to Oku versus Tihani, I think? Uh, yes, I actually really, uh, I really, well, I also really liked uh, Oku versus, um, uh, who did he face on night one? Oh, Fennec, yeah. Uh, Joseph Fennec Jr. Uh, I, re I I actually loved both of Oku's matches that I saw. Uh, him versus Tihani was great. Him versus uh, Fennec was great. Which actually, because actually I would say, because I already expected big things from Oku versus Tihani. Mm -hmm. uh, but Fennec versus uh, Oku literally like got me back into the match almost against my own will. Because I was really not happy after I thought I had just saw Wagner got injured. Mm -hmm. Like, I was very much not in a good mood, and they just got me back into it. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think that's also one of the reasons why I'm really giving a credit. And the other thing, uh, I will definitely get, like, seats next time. Because I had, like, GA tickets, so standing room tickets for night one and night two. And the night two show went like four and a half hours <laughs> again on hard concrete floor. Like my feet were just killing me. And I did not enjoy Erie versus uh, Robert Dreisker. I was just like, they were doing like crowd brawling and the match went like for like way too long. The crowd was just, I mean, I, people are saying that the crowd was just really tired. But right. I don't know. To me, it's also Dreisker just isn't that over. Like, he seems like a super nice guy, and he's a solid wrestler, but he's just, like, not that top-level guy. Right. Because whenever Erie did something, he was super over. And then Dreisker did something, and the crowd just goes silent. Like, they don't even boo. So, yeah. Like, that main event just didn't work for me at all, especially not after, like, four and a half hours and me just, like... <laughs> Wanting to go to bed. Yeah. Well, that uh, was a very good report. And uh, so how would you rank this in previous uh, 16 carats you've been to? Well, I've only been to two. <laughs> oh, okay. For some reason, I thought you'd been to two. No, no, no. I've only been to two. Uh, I would say I preferred it over the... I mean, the other one I only did one night. Uh, the one in 2022, but I, I I would say overall I preferred this one because I think it had told like a very clear logical story. Uh, I did I wasn't at night free, so I don't know how I would feel because. Uh, so like Tihani went to the final, but he didn't win, which I thought was gonna be like the logical like conclusion here, but yeah. he lost against Lawrence Roman, who was really just been like a lower cut guy and like a member of Dreiske stable as well. So I really don't like, I guess they're doing like some sort of like, uh, like dissension story within like Ambos. So like Dreiske stable, but like Lawrence Roman versus Robert Dreiske just isn't a main event level match to me. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, especially after Eerie lost, because I actually was like, okay, if Eerie wins, I mean, Tihani was Eerie. Ah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, but then also, so like when Dreisker won, I was like, okay, now that means that 
Tihani is definitely winning tomorrow and then he's going to take the title off of Dreisker. That's really clear logical booking. But again, they did neither of that. So now I'm not sure where they're actually going with the Dreisker reign. Mm -hmm. Which again, is probably going to last a year. So, yeah. But otherwise, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, breaking news, Paul. And I only bring this up because it could have an effect on something we might be covering. But um, looks like there's going to be WWE talent on Barnett's Bloodsport on Media Weekend. Ooh. So does that mean that they could end up in Japan as well? We were all suspecting it was all Japan and WWE, but it was Bloodsport all along. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but who's going to be? Is, do, did they like announce who is going to oh, be? Oh, Shayna Baszler. Okay, announced, but that's that we makes got sense. So yeah, that's all we got so far. But again, it might just be like, because okay, I, I wanted to victory lap this later. <laughs> victory but... lap it now. Yeah, we might as well victory lap it now because the champion carnival announced, like people got announced, and uh, hey, look at that! Zero WWE wrestlers in the champion carnival. Who could have guessed it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, because again, as it turns out, this whole WWE AL Japan relationship was just fucking Hideki Suzuki getting his buddy, like William Regal's son, a like quick match, a quick excursion to Japan. Yeah, because he was doing fucking nothing in NXT, mm -hmm. so that's all that won... turned out to be. Well, he just won the Heritage Cup, you know. He, oh he's... yeah, well, <laughs> great, the most prestigious thing ever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I I have a feeling that this could actually be the same thing, like if it stays with just Saint Shayna Baszler, right? Because that feels like a thing where that might have been a thing where like. Barnett probably just reached out to WWE and was like, hey, can I get Shayna Baszler for this? And they were like, sure, we're not well, doing the initial report anyway. That was multiple. So we just have Baszler so far. Uh, okay. Well, okay. That's different. That's different then. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would make the whole like Japan show a lot more interesting. Uh, how the uh, politics of that work out and who is going to be able to work that show. But I, yeah. I I have no idea for sure, but it's something to look out for. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, uh, Charlie Dempsey would make a lot of sense for that blood sport show. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that that could be uh, in play too, right? He can get his win back over Nakajima at <laughs> blood sport Japan. <laughs> so, yeah, I just bring that up because I could uh, I could see that happening in Japan. So we'll just keep an eye on that. So we'll go to... Pro wrestling, Noah, and I would say after this string of shows and some other events, this has been a roller coaster ride of emotions. <laughs> yes, that's, we go from down to somewhat up, I up guess, but to we first go down. possibly down. Um, uh, yeah, who knows? <laughs> so we start uh, on March 2nd in uh, Nagoya at the International Conference Hall in front of 809 fans, which I mean. <laughs> All Japan book gets over 900 for like tournament stops, like in, for the yeah. real champion carnival. So, and you had a big singles match. So I would say not good. No. Um, I think it could have been worse, but I watched yeah. this live, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. <laughs> uh, because it's it, it was like, I think it started at 2 a.m. or something. And I was like, ah, yeah, I'll, eh, I might as well. Um, but uh, I'll just say in terms of the undercard Ninja Mac versus Alejandro was a fun little match a nice opener and you can imagine how that went right and he won in 735 yeah. with the Ninja Bomb Ninja Mac continues to be the highlight of the opening ma two matches of the show I still don't know why they haven't done anything with him yet except for an accident yeah it's title weird win. yeah it's so weird like they signed him to a contract and then they've been like like he's, Wagner he, he's pretty protected as well yeah. Yeah. He's pretty protected as well, but then they never like actually do anything meaningful. I guess he's got the hardcore weird. title, but that's not coming back till Monday match. That's not meaningful. <laughs> no. Um and then uh well I only say this because if all high had a match because I had to beat LJ Cleary in seven fifty with the like a cradle. That was a perfectly acceptable like three and a quarter star match, and I you know what I mean. 
Like I don't have. Oh any yeah, no, absolutely, because it didn't go twenty two minutes like it yeah. normally does. So we get into the victory challenge, and uh, we have Dragon Bane and Alpha Wolf defeating Keno and Yu Owada in twelve minutes and thirty seven seconds with the Twister Bane uh, on Owada. I mean, this is great, and I, and that was one of the yeah. best matches of the tournament up to this point. Yeah, absolutely. Like this just really rocked. Just Dragon Bane, Alpha Wolf, just flying all around. It's very entertaining. And Owada, I mean. I'll just say this now: a lot of races stock like significantly after in this tournament. Yes, no, for sure. Like you can kind of see him grow like right in front of our eyes, and he's he's getting over. Like he was already over when I was in Japan, but he is getting even more over now. I think he might have a higher ceiling than Ozawa. Yeah, I've seen other people say that as well. Like they're like, yeah, there's something here with Awada. Yeah. And then next up in the Victory Challenge Tag League, uh, Masa Kitamiya and Daiki Naba went to a draw with Manabusoi and Shuji Kondo uh, in 20 minutes. Sorry, I keep... That's 30 minutes is always my in my head for draws. Again, this was pretty good. I thought the last few minutes with Kitamiya and Soya were really great. And like, uh, you know, Soya just trying to get that pin by the time running out. Yeah. No, Masa, Masa Kitamiya, like, yeah. Uh, sorry, I met Inaba. Just like he's just great at surviving this kind of stuff. And, yeah, yeah, and and Soya is great too. Like, I get, I get. I mean, they pushed. I can't say that they didn't push him, but I feel like they're not gonna push him to that same degree again that they did last year. But he's mm-hmm. still so good. So yeah, yeah. Um, and then the victory challenge tag league. Oh, sorry, no, GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship. Mm-hmm. Daga's I was about to say, Ta- let's not skip over that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we can also. That's also Daga fun. defeated Tadasuke in 1449 with the Diablo Wings. I mean, I thought this was another, like, perfectly acceptable, like, three and a quarter, three and a half star match. Mm-hmm. And, you yeah. know, it had some good couple of closing stretch, under 15 minutes. I can't complain about this. I mean, I guess it's given that we've, like, sat for, like, years of, like... Oh, I mean, this had the belt... Hayata matches... Yeah. But I mean it wasn't like a bunch of interference or anything, just like a low blow. No. Yeah. I mean, again, like a Hayata Hayata Daga is solid. But yeah, I don't know. I've just it's probably it hurts me a little bit that I watched Daga a lot, like when he was coming up in AAA as well, and he's just yeah. still doing the exact same stuff that he was doing back then. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just kinda over the whole Daga thing and I'm not sure why he's still holding that i guess maybe because they don't have a better idea well this should be the bit you know, should be ninja man. yeah exactly like why 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 like we have so many like exciting potential high flyers in that division and it's on daga who's solid but also very much unexciting um yeah and i mean there are other people in mexico that noah could conceivably have gotten over if they really wanted to that would be better in daga's spot yeah and then next up, um, oh, sorry, what were you going to say? No, I mean, I was also like, I mean, maybe like Dragon Bane or Alpha Wolf, but it seems like they want to go heavyweight, so yeah. maybe not. But yeah, I mean, there's like loads of people that they could bring in and that get brought in by like other promotions. I mean, I mean, he's not a junior, but like Galeno Del Mal, like to me, it's still the biggest like oversight by Noah that they let great bring in Galeno Del Mal, you know, mm-hmm. like it just doesn't make sense. Why he's there and not a no. They could just steal him unless he's got a contract. Yeah. I was, dude, it's dude, great. <laughs> yeah, they don't sign foreigners to contracts. Yeah. Way. Yeah. They this is just I think he I think there's still a chance that he will end up in Noah at some point. Yeah. Um Victory Challenge Tag League. Goshi Ozaki and Atsushi Katoge defeated Saxon Huxley and Timothy Thatcher in 1328 uh with the go on lariat from Shiozaki on Huxley. I mean, it was perfectly fine and solid. I got to say, I'm just getting bored of Huxley and Thatcher. They're not bad, but Mm -hmm. just it's the same thing over and over. Yeah. I mean, because I think I was kind of turning a bit of a corner on them before the tournament, but I think the tournament just really exposed that there's just no depth here at all. Yeah, no. Um, And we'll get to that more on that later. Oh, actually, I just remembered because Thatcher... Uh, so actually one of the things that got announced at the end of Ambition, because we were talking about Bloodsport as well earlier 
So at the so Axel Tischer won the ambition tournament, uh, and he did like a whole speech about Ringkampf afterwards because mm. he was actually one of the original founders when it was just a clothing brand before it got turned into a wrestling stable. Uh, and he actually challenged Thatcher to a match at uh, Bloodsport in uh, in the US at Mania Weekend. Okay. Okay. And that could actually be really good. Uh huh. And next for in the Great Voyage special singles match. <laughs> Talking about not so great. <laughs> Jake Lee versus Kazuyuki Fujita went to a time limit draw in 30 minutes. Now, this wasn't like horrible. It was just boring. But what was egregious to me is, okay, you're getting to 25 minutes. They start suplexing, suplexing each other. I mean, at that point, I knew like you can't make up for 25 minutes of nothing. But you can have a nice little finish. But mm-hmm. as the time is running out, like Fujita shows no sense of urgency and just gingerly nope. like power bombs Jake and <laughs> like, takes forever to like cover him before the time as the time runs out. And I'm just like, come. Yep. I it, it was horrible. Man. I mean, as a the whole 30 minute experience, it was not good. And no, the, I mean this was bad. Frustrating. Yeah. This was this was just bad. This was Fujita bad as far as like this was really just very self indulgent, just just really like just playing up the whole like I'm just so much better than this like whole like little wrestling nonsense we're doing here. Yeah. And yeah, no, this was not good. Just as you said, there was some enjoyable parts of it, but overall it was a bad match. It was too long. I mean, it, it was a time limit draw, but again, just not great like why is your challenger like going to a time limit draw and like the one big singles match he has as a setup for his title ma- match that doesn't make any sense unless obviously you're flipping the title to Jake and then having Fujita as the first challenger which would be an awful decision because then you've cut the Kenner rain short like the hot Kenner rain short for a transitionary rain on Wagner who was also kind of hot who then immediately loses it to Jake, who then gets challenged by Fujita, who is just feels completely out of place in a promotion now. Like just a completely baffling, like just chain of booking decisions that yeah, I don't know. Like like I think maybe that's what made the match worse for me because I already knew it was gonna be a 30 minute time limit draw. And I was just angry, kind of watching it the entire time. I'm just like, why? Why are we doing this? Like, and why? Why is this the way it is? Why is this so boring? Why is Fujita not caring? Why? Just why? Basically, <laughs> I would say that this is the biggest regress regression back that Noah's had this year. In yes, terms of for sure. Like, this is the worst thing they've done. Yeah. In terms of feeling like, oh, we've turned a corner. No, we haven't. Uh, well, okay. Well, okay, well, okay. I just said it's the worst thing they've done this year. It's not. <laughs> That's still the Ibushi match. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but again, in terms of regression, it's like because to me, it's like they've been moving up since then, and this is the first one where there's a notable like move back down, and we'll see if it is the start of a longer move back down or if we're like moving back up. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. And then in the main event, Kaito Kiyomiya and Ryohei, and for the victory challenge, Kaito Kiyomiya and Ryohei Oiwa defeated Takashi Sugera and Uka Sasaki in 17-15 when Kiyomiya uh, made, uh, um, it was Sugera tap to the uh, figure four leg lock. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought this was a solid main event. Uh, I really liked the Sugera and Kiyomiya stuff. And Uka is is improving i think in every match yes yeah i mean it wasn't a great match but no. it was solid enough and uh no uh and this was also where like the kiyomiya and the eva team was like starting their comeback as well yeah and then we go on to march 3rd at takaoka ikul in front of 342 fans uh we had in the victory challenge, uh, Masakidami and Deki and Naba defeated Keno and Yu Owada in 11-20 with a Saito suplex on from Kira Mia on Owada. Again, just another really fun match. Uh, Keno and Kitamiya 
going into each other and Owada mm -hmm. just like, you know, going down valiantly. And that was really like in every match, it was like Owada <laughs> like getting a couple of flash pins and then eating the pin. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really curious if they're going to like continue this Keno you Owada team going forward or not. Uh, I think they should. Because what else is Keno going to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weird as that feels. Yeah. And then victory challenge, Saxon Huxley and Timothy Thatcher defeated Takashi Sugura and Uka Sasaki in 11-28 when uh, Huxley used a neck-hanging bomb on Sasaki. I would say this was one of the weaker matches of the tournament, but I still didn't think it was mm -hmm. like football or anything. But, uh, you know, apart from some Thatcher and Sugura stuff and maybe Uka actually getting a couple of like near submissions towards the end, there wasn't much to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, what I will say, I think that's just, I mean, this was probably the floor for the tournament, right? Because I'm trying to think if there was a yes. match that was really worse this, than this. This is a small show, and I felt like yeah. most of the stuff on here did not quite live up to what I thought. Yeah. So, and I mean, it, but it's not like anything was bad, which I think is no. like the thing I can really say about the tournament. There wasn't really a lot that was blowing me away, but there was also nothing that was bad. And no. we really kind of like reached the floor here. And this was still just solid as heck. Yeah. And then uh, in the victory challenge, uh, it was Kato Kimi and Ryohei Oiwa defeating Dragon Bane and Alpha Wolf in 1609 with a modified Shining Wizard from Kimi on Wolf. Now, what I will say with this is watching this match, I thought to myself, we're in the dog days of this tournament because, again, this is a very solid match, mm -hmm. but I would ex I expected more from these two teams, yes. even what they had already done in the tournament so far. Yeah, no, this was probably the biggest disappointment in the entire tournament because I had this one kind of earmarked when they announced the kind of uh, the participants, and I'm like, okay, that's probably one to watch out for because they could do some crazy stuff, and they just kind of didn't. Yeah, it, it was... Not a bad match, but just a victim of high expectations, I think is the yes, best way definitely. of phrasing it. And in the main event for the Victory Challenge, Tagli Go Shiozaki and Sushi Katoge defeated Manabu Soy and Shuji Kondo in 1638 when Shiozaki pinned Kondo with the Golan Lariat. Uh, I thought this was the best match of the show, but again, it was like a three and a half star range. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys were sort of like, I don't know. Taking the night off is a strong word, but uh, <laughs> maybe not going all out would be more uh, apt. I'm thinking they weren't really willing to work that hard in the bright lights of Takaoka. Yeah, this was one of those uh, like on-demand shows too. Oh, yeah. Those took uh, forever to go. Why do well, they take so long to go up? <laughs> so someone had said to me like, oh, it's just for a staggered... Uh, format on, on Wrestle Universe, so they always have content, but I think that's so stupid. Uh, I wanted to watch, like, yeah, I wanted to watch the show with like uh, Kaido versus Anthony Green and Jack Morris versus Raiho Iwa, but it didn't go up before we could record, yeah. And, also, and I mean, like, the March 8th show not going up until after the tournament is over, yeah. So just, I haven't watched like, the March 8th what the fuck show. Are we I, doing? I, I haven't watched the March 8th show, and I don't think I'm going to. Yeah, no, same, because I'm like, the tournament is already over, and like, just based on the way this tournament has been, where it's like, yeah, this has been incredibly solid, but I already know how it ends, so... I have, I don't a, feel I have like a feeling that... Any... I have a feeling that the level of work would be, was going to be similar on the March 8th show. Yeah. Uh, so we, we skip March 8th and go to March 9th <laughs> at the F Fukuoka Island City Forum. Um... And so in the Victory Challenge tagline, we have Saxon Huxley and Timothy Thatcher defeating Manu Busoy and Shuji Kondo in 13-19 uh, when Thatcher used the Fujiwara arm bar on uh, Soya to get a bit of a... I can't call that an upset, but Thatcher submitting Soya sort of is, I guess, given where they have both been in the company as of late. Again, I mean, Soya and, and Kondo are, are a little better... Uh, uh, stylistically for guys like Huxley and Thatcher. And I thought that was maybe one of the better Huxley and Thatcher matches, but again, like nothing blow away. Yeah, no, I agree with that as well. And I mean, Shuji Kondo doesn't take a lot of like, lo like submission losses because I'm trying to think when he would be the last time that he got submitted. So that might be the reason why Doya yeah. was the one that took the loss here. And in the victory challenge, technically Go Shiozaki and Tsushi Kotoge went to a draw with Dragon Bane and Alpha Wolf in 20 minutes. I thought this was pretty good. 
and more of a return to form for mm -hmm. these teams. Yeah, uh, but you did have the spot here where Go Shiozaki. Uh, oh yes, of course he does yeah. that, like suplex or the front suplex off the or like the Falcon ish arrow type thing off of the, of the rope. And then in, in in the process, Bane loses his mask. And yeah. my favorite part of it is you see like um go like flick the mask toward Dragon Bane. <laughs> this is what's happened. Like he tried to do it like smoothly and, and discreetly, but the camera was like right trained on him. <laughs> okay, to be fair, but that one was an intentional spot. They actually not like that, but uh Wagner actually did a spot where he lost his mask during his match of Pitehani. Oh really? Oh. Uh, yeah, but it was intentional because I actually saw him like loosen this like the the bindings on his mask before they did the spot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was intentional. Uh I'm not gonna like deduct any big marks for that sort of blown spot. Or no, like, no, no, no. But I like that. yeah, I mean to me though, it looked a bit like Goshiozaki kind of overestimating his strength a little bit. Yeah, because Bane is a smaller guy. Yeah. Um, and then in the victory challenge, technically, Keno and Yu Owada defeated Takashi Sugera and Uka Sasaki when uh, Owada used a backslide on Sasaki to get the pin. And I thought this was a nice little match with a nice little mm -hmm. finish. Like, you know, you think that Sasaki's going to like make Owada tap, but then you get the uh, upset and a big win for Owada, even though Sasaki obviously sort of. Uh, um, you know, has been taking losses, but I still think it was a big moment for Owada. Yeah, definitely was a really big win for Owada. I'm trying to think that was probably his first win over a non like young boy, right? Well, I don't I think how, well, Sasaki's sort of a unique case. Yes, Sasaki is a bit of a unique case. Yeah, I wouldn't call him a young boy, but I guess you could technically, but. I mean, still a big win for Wada, and the crowd also popped for it as well. Yeah, for sure. Really big pop. And then in the main event, Kaido Kimiya for the Victory Challenge, of course, Kaido Kimiya and Ryohei Oiwa defeated Masa Kitamiya and Dakiyanab in 1814 with a modified Shining Wizard uh, from Kiyomiya on Inaba. Uh, definitely one of the better matches in this tournament, and I thought uh, mm -hmm. really great. I thought Oiwa looked really great here as well. I mean, I don't know where Oe was gonna slide in when he returns to New Japan, but he could uh, he could leapfrog some people there. I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so he's already won more. F uh, I mean, we'll get to that a bit a bit later. But spoiler, uh, he's won more things than, uh, or he has won more things in Japan than other people of a similar age in uh, uh, New Japan have now. Yes. Yes, he has. It it's very weird to say that Noah is doing Noah of all promotions is doing a better job of pushing young New Japan guys to New Japan. <laughs> yeah. That is so funny. And then so we go to the final night of the tournament at Kumamoto Castles Castle Hall, Civic Hall. That's how it translates. In front of 465 fans. Now, Paul, I don't know the capacity of this building, but that's not going to be a good number for the final night of the tournament. No, not for the final night. Yeah. I, I, I don't know like who even runs Kumamoto regularly otherwise, but yeah, I don't even know what to like compare this one to, but again, it wasn't a great number for the final night, but I mean, the building looked decently full. I will say that. Yeah. So I can't really, yeah, but you know, Noah turns down the lights yeah, and everything like that. So who's to say, uh, but yeah, they might have to do that when they go to UK, uh, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so in 2023, Dragon Gate 551, Noah 434, Kyushu Pro 513, DDT 283. So, uh, maybe this, yeah. this venue is not that big, but just that's a strange place to finish it yeah it feels like yeah yeah i don't know why they ended it there i mean someone also brought up that this might not be like them bringing back this as like a big yearly tournament that this was just a way to get like some challengers yeah. for green and morris 
And I guess this maybe might be like a thing to back that up that they just added it in this like random how like house show tour stop basically. Yeah, I can't find any Kumamoto Castle Hall before 2019 on Cage Match. I mean, it might have had a different name, or someone, or it might have been input in a different under yeah. a different name. Which I, is but okay, always so... a bit of a problem with Cage Match and. Different people doing different promotions in Japan, having different ways of inputting the names of yeah. venues. But needless a, to a say, <laughs> this does not look like a big building. No, it definitely wasn't. Like, that's what I mean. Like, that's why it looked pretty decently full, but it definitely, I mean, we know that with, especially with the Dragon Gate number now, there wasn't a sellout, which if it's a small building and you don't sell it out for like a final of a league, that's not great. Yeah. So uh, we go to that show and we have um, from the Victory Challenge Tag League, Takashi Sugera and Uka Sasaki defeating Masa Kitami and Deki Inaba in 11-19 with a triangle choke uh, from Sasaki on Inaba. Again, this is Kitami and Sugera socking each other. And then uh, nice little finishing sequence uh, from Uka and Inaba. And I think like you see like Sasaki working more complex sequences and everything. Yeah. And you also kind of get a bit of a better idea where they're kind of slotting him right now. Yeah. On the roster. Again, that's why I'm saying, like, yeah, maybe it's a bit of a special case. Because is he a young boy? Okay. Let me ask you this. Do you consider Yuma Anza a young boy? I consider him a super rookie. <laughs> Because I would say Sasaki might actually be slaughtered above guys like Inaba, for example. And like Taniguchi, even though he lost to Taniguchi. Yeah. He definitely is. It just feels that way. Yeah. So and that's that why I'm like, I don't know if I would classify him as a young boy, but I also don't know if I would classify him as a... Like, for example, would you classify Takashi Segura when he started off? Like, you know... Yeah, yeah, exactly. He kind of got pushed right out of the gate as well. Yeah, but he was like 30 when he debuted. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and that's what I mean. That's why he is kind of more similar to Alka. In that well, it's like the, the, the Saitos as well. Yeah. Well, the Saitos actually did go for like a young boy phase where they did eat shit and then went on excursion. Yeah. And then... Um... Oh, if Victory Challenge, Dragon Bane and Alpha Wolf defeated Manu Busoya and Shuji Kondo in 1225... When uh, Bane used the Bane Twister on a condo. Uh, again, another solid match. Can't call it spectacular, mm -hmm. but I sort of figured that these two teams would work together well, especially with Condo in there with some high flyers. Yeah. And also the start of the best part of the whole night, which is Dragon Bane and Alpha Wolf <laughs> watching the remaining matches from the sidelines. Yes, to see if they could go through. And then in the Victory Challenge Tag League, Saxon Huxley and Timothy Thatcher defeated Keno and Yu Owada in 328 with a neck hanging bomb from Huxley on Owada. I mean, for a three and a half minute match, I thought it was good, right? They kind of come in, they yeah. brought the side. Keno comes in at one point, starts kicking everyone. Owada, Owada gets a couple roll ups on Huxley before eating shit. Yeah. No, I mean, they got in, got out quickly. I would say this might have been like Huxley and Thatcher's best match of the tournament. <laughs> Just I'm because up. it was just a quick in and out and it did exactly what it was supposed to. Yeah. And then in the uh, Victory Challenge Tag League, Kaido Kimiya and Ryohei Oiwa defeated Goshi Ozaki and Atsushi Kotoge in 1652 with a Dr. Bomb from Oiwa on Kotoge. I think this might have been one of the best matches, if not the best match on the tournament. I thought mm -hmm. Oiwa was really the star of this match. And it was just like, really, I think these are the two best, well, the Gopa Dores, and then the, these are the next two best teams. Yeah. In Noah. Yeah, I will. I, will, I mean, I would maybe consider uh, Ketamiya and Inaba up there yep. as well. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, the Noah tag division is in a good place, right? Like it's oh, mostly, uh, but I would say like it, it, it has been booked very, very solidly. Yeah. And yeah, no, I, I also agree. I To me, this was the best match of the whole tournament. Just I thought this was great. Mm -hmm. I thought Go Shiozaki and Kotoga have actually been way better like as a team than I would have expected them to be. Uh, and yeah, I thought 
Oh, yeah, but I agree as well. He was really, really good here. And this also really, really nicely, like, completed the arc that uh, Kaito and Oiba went through on the tournament, right? Because they, early on, they had all of the losses that Oiba took. And then Kaito kind of was the one that brought them, like, back into contention. And they go in here in the final night. And Kaito, like, and the dynamic was Oiba has eaten all of the pins and Kaito has gotten all of the wins. And then here, finally, Oiba is actually the one to get the pin and, like, sent them through to the final. And just, you know... That's kind of how you want to book your, like, the baby face team's arc, right? Like, the ones that you want to win the tournament. So I thought they did a really, really, really good job of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for the GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title, uh, Johan Tadeske defeated Daga and Yoshinari Ogawa in 22-15 when uh, Yohei pinned Ogawa with a cradle when Ogawa went for a backdrop. Oh, I kind of love this match. <laughs> I mean, you could say that the the uh, brutalization of Yohei went on too long. You could have cut a few minutes off, but Yohei was a great sympathetic baby face. The crowd was hot, and it was Ogawa spending most of the time picking Yohei apart. So that was great. So I yeah. thought it just all flowed together to be like you know the underdog. I guess they were sort of underdogs, and Yohei's performance was wonderful. So. I thought it was a great match. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we've been saying this for a while now, right? That Yohei and Tarasuke is like the team that everyone is sleeping on. Yeah. Because they've been really, really good since they kind of came back together. Mm -hmm. And when they formed GLG and they've kind of really become like the anchors of the junior tag team division. And they've just really, more than anything, really like stabilized and brought that division like back up from like the doldrums of like endless like Eta, Hayata, kind of like just nonsense. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And again, like this is a perfect example. Like imagine if this had been Hayata and Eta versus Daga and Ogawa, which again is what I expected it to be. And then, you know, instead we got this, which, which was much better than that other match would have been. And that would have been a similar length, right? Like that also would have been 22 minutes and it would have been a lot worse than this was. Yeah, like I, I really enjoyed this at Johan Tarasuke. I, yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed that dynamic. Like it just works really well with like Johan as the like uh, the underdog baby face and a Tarasuke coming in and like cleaning house and yeah, no, just very good. Like meat and potatoes wrestling, and they also like they're sloppy good as well. Like they're not the most polished workers. No, but they're not sloppy in a way that I think it hurts it. I think they're actually kind of sloppy in a way that it kind of enhances their matches because it makes you root for them more. So, no, I, I also agree with you. I thought this was this way exceeded my expectations for sure. And uh, Tadasuke, or sorry, Yohei pinned Ogawa, which Ogawa doesn't do a lot of jobs really either, too. No, yeah, I mean, to be fair, Daga is the champion, yeah, but still, yeah, the fact that Ogawa actually took the pin here, uh. Is notable as well. And after the match, Yohei challenged Daga. Mm hmm So, so I, uh, I don't think Yohei is going to win, but yeah, we'll see. And then in the main event and the finals of the Victory Challenge Tag League, Kaido Kimi and Raihoi Oiwa defeated Saxon Huxley and Timothy Thatcher in 22-24 with a modified Shining Wizard from Kimi on Huxley. They should have cut some time off of this. <laughs> like, it was yeah. fine, but it didn't feel like a finals of a tournament. Like, obviously, like, you know, Huxley and Thatcher get in there, they rough them up, they brawl out ringside, and then it's like the baby face has got to make the comeback. This is your default, like, big foreigners beating up the Japanese guys in the finals of a tournament and everything like that. Like, and I know the story they were going for, even though I think. You could have made a better final if you <laughs> teams or something like you know what if it was them versus Las Copadores and they like were had been saving themselves in their previous match to doing like a crazy final, yeah, that actually would have been way cooler. That would have been cool, but uh, you know they went for the old school story and you know the right people won. I mean it's not a horrible match. It's just you know was a little yeah. You know, obviously, like Thatcher, I mean, this team, the Real team can only do so much. 
I mean, especially once we know that this was going to be the final, that was also like a bit of a foregone conclusion who was going to win as well. Yeah. I feel like if you had done like 14 minutes in this match, that would have been more than enough to just establish the story I wanted to tell and then still do the result that everyone expected. But yeah, they just dragged it out way too much. Yeah. Uh, more breaking news, Paul. Ooh. Uh, Katsuyori Shibata versus Brian Danielson on Collision tomorrow. What? What the fuck? <laughs> so much for him to, uh, so much him going to fucking, uh, oh, Shibata, sorry. I understood that as Nakajima for some reason. No. Shibata versus Danielson. I mean, fuck yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> You know, and it's just a warm up for him versus Will Osprey. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, are you gonna make your way over to Ottawa? No, that's like seven hours away. That's right. I always forget Canadian distances are, are very large. <laughs> um. So no. Um. I might go to a collision at the end of the month, but I haven't decided on that. Uh. It'd be a last minute thing. Uh, depends on what we get, but at this point, if uh, 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 we keep getting booking like Japanese stars on these shows, then I will. <laughs> you get like randomly just get like Okada Danielson <laughs> or something, yeah. Uh, so overall, the um, uh, Victory Challenge Tag League was good, but not great. But I think no one needed it. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 They just I mean, needed something to inject some juice into the store, and this definitely did that. I mean, like the thing was, there was nothing bad. I'm not even sure I had anything really below, like maybe two and three quarter stars. No. Um, but I mean, I think this this show, uh, this tournament, topped out at four. Yeah. Right. You couldn't get to nothing even close to match the year level or anything like that. No, 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 absolutely not. But like, think about like we would have had nothing to talk about for this tour if this tournament hadn't been here. Oh, yeah. No, we spent 40 minutes on Jake versus Fujita. <laughs> <laughs> Just angry ranting about it for 40 minutes. <laughs> so, Paul, this takes us to the, their next show coming up on Sunday on St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. uh, Great Voice 2024 in Yokohama at the Yokohama Budokan. I'm uh, already going to be drunk when the show happens. Yes, I know it starts at 10 a.m. my time. I don't care. <laughs> um, but let's look at this card here. So we've got six man tag match Hayata and Injun Mac, Alejandro versus Dragon Bane, Elf Wolf, and Super Crazy. That could go either way, I suppose, depending on how it's booked. Hajime uh, Ohara. Hey. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. Actually, no, disregard that completely. <laughs> forget it. Forget uh, it. <laughs> Hajime Ohara versus LJ Cleary, which I would hope Cleary wins. Um, Mandibu yeah. Masakitamiya, and Deki Inaba versus all three members of Real, so Huxley, Thatcher, and Taniguchi. That faction is so weird. Like now, I think that we can say for sure that, like, since their daddy Dickie left, is gone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, El Hio de Dr. Wagner Jr. and Shuji Kondo versus Jake Lee and Tadasuke. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, Keno versus Uka Sasaki. That one I am really very much looking forward to. Yes. That's a really big, like, test for where Sasaki is at now. I if think he can hang with someone like Keno. I I am cautiously optimistic on this match coming out of the tag league. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. But it definitely will like we will, because I mean some people can get hidden a little bit in tag matches as well. Yeah. So it is definitely a big. Test I mean, for him there's to... time where Sasaki like you can tell like he's thinking of what he's going to do next. Yeah. And stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I th I'm confident with Keno, and they'll just do mount yeah. and stuff. And kick each yeah, other. Yeah, and also, exactly. I also feel like Keno is going to just like kick the thinking out of him as well. Mm. And then we have an elimination match. So it's Naomichi Marafuji, Takashi Sugara, Yoshinori Ogawa, Junta, Junta Miyawaki, and Yu Wada versus Go Shiozaki, Mohamed Yone, Akitoshi Saito, uh, Atsushi Katoge, and Hiroki. Uh, oh, I got to say, poor Saito. He did the tribute to uh yoshie on the noah show and he was just bawling his eyes out yeah um, no it's for him yeah yeah he's, he's I mean, he more than anyone really yeah. knows 
you know, it sucks. Yeah. Um, Paul, is Awada getting a big elimination here, even if it's just over the top rope? Oh, yeah, because it is an elimination match. I mean, I could probably eliminate Hiroki. Yeah, or even Kotogir Saito or Yone. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think Kotoge. I yeah. don't think Kotoge. I, I would say if he limits anyone, it's Hiroki. Okay. Uh, I think that could be pretty good. And then JC Junior Heavyweight Championship match, Daga versus Yohei. Yeah, I mean, it'll be three and a half stars like every Daga match ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, give him 15 minutes. It could be decent. Again, it's Daga. It will be three and a half. Like, it will be three and a half stars. Yeah. Like, you also put him in there with, like, I'm trying to think off the top of my head with a really bad junior. Oh, yeah. If you put him in there with uh, Yuya Susumu, he'll also give you three and a half stars. So, yeah. And then in the main event, it is for the GHC Tag Team Championship Jack Morris and Anthony Green versus Kaido Kiyomi and Ryohei Oiwa. I think Kiyomi and Oiwa have to win. Yeah. Uh, but, Paul, this is an interesting card to run at Yokohama Budokan. Very much so. And the fact, I think you were going to bring this up anyway, but the fact that this is in Yokohama Budokan and the JHC title matters in Kurokan is also very interesting. Well, <laughs> oh, we have to bring this up because I didn't watch the show. But uh, Jake has a concussion. Oh, yeah. We almost forgot about that part, yeah. Because we touched on it earlier. I was like, well, both men are kind of yeah. fucked up going into the match. So but yeah, we, they we got concussed by... By Dragon Bane, yeah. Uh, so basically, Dragon Bane did his like moon sold off the top, and he hit uh, Jake in the face with his knee, and Jake was very clearly out afterwards. There's no way that Jake will be ready for like this Sunday, right? <sighs> very unlikely. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. I'm definitely possible. not working on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. How much longer is it until the title match? Uh, it'll be uh, so. This show's on the thirty uh, first. So he's got two weeks. Oh, yeah, he, he'll be fine. He'll be Maybe. fine for that. Well, yeah. I mean, it is a concussion, so you never know. But, but he should be taken off. Odds are he should be. Uh, he should be taken off as a precaution. He's not taking bumps until then, which yeah, he's a wrestler, so who knows? And then on the thirty first at Corkin, uh, all that's announced so far is Kimi and Oiwa versus Keno and Owada. Which mm -hmm. you know would be great, and then uh, Mara Fuji versus Uka Sasaki. That should be really good as well. And then uh, Wagner versus Jake Lee. Mm -hmm. Actually, just for quick going back to Kiyomi and Oiwa, I just remember because we're talking already like how Oiwa has already won things. It also would be very funny if he is like the first guy of his generation to win an actual title too. Yes, uh, he probably will be. Uh, yeah, and. I forgot to put this on the run sheet, but uh, because of Kenny Omega's di diverticulitis, we lost that out of Kenny Omega versus Keno. Yeah, I saw that as well. That that where would have that even happened? Okay. Like, would I they have brought like... him into Noah? I think so. Or on a DDT show, maybe even. Maybe. Or has Kenny ever worked Noah before? I don't think so. Because I think that's like the one big Japanese promotion he never worked, right? He did All Japan. He obviously did a shitload of DDT. Did do New Japan. Yeah, I'm looking at it, and I don't see Noah anywhere here. No, I don't see Noah at all. Yeah? No, I don't think he ever worked Noah. Uh, could it have been the main event of this show? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. If you do that anywhere, like that's automatically your main event. Uh, so people are a little unclear because it sounded like Omega said like it would have happened by now, but but where would you have like was it would it have be, been like when? Yeah, because from when was he out? Since when has he been out? I don't think he's wrestled in twenty twenty four. But well, what I'm trying yeah, to because he's at been here... he's been gone since December. His last match was on December fifth. Oh, December. Eight. Uh, okay, that they had already announced. Yeah, that they already announced the Bushi Marufuji. Yep, and they'd already announced uh, Soya versus uh, Keno. Yeah, so maybe we would have gotten like a Keno. Yeah, maybe I mean, we would have been one of the title defenses. Is it also possible that he meant that the Sumo Hall in May? 
maybe maybe he met maybe he kind of like if you're bringing like Kenny Omega, already you announced be, it you got to be running at least sumo hall yeah like there's no way you can like because what i was thinking maybe he was supposed to be on the maybe he was supposed to be the title defense but that time uh, on the new year show no. but that timeline doesn't add up because they also announced that title defense like immediately as well so yeah i i like i i don't see where it would have fit in in the schedule so far yeah like it, I feel like maybe they would have already announced it to build up hype for it. Yes, for sure. Now, in that case, it makes more sense Keno losing the title. But that the other issue with that is that that that's Noah chasing a big show again instead of long term booking. Yes, but oh, I, I mean, wanna... I feel like I mean, I've, I but if they had part done it as part of the right because the Sumo Hall show is like the Monday Magic show, right? Which is kind of non-canon anyway. So in that case, yeah. I could have kind of excused doing like a big one-off thing because it's kind of non-canon anyway. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, lastly on Noah, we got to talk about Noah and the, Noah in the UK with what is it, Progress and Defy? Yeah, I mean, well, Progress and Defy are just the same company now. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, Progress bought Defy. With or their the uh, owners of Progress bought Defy, with their very reasonably pr- priced tickets. Yeah, very reasonable. So I actually looked at that, and to me, it seems like they just took the yen prices that they're charging, yeah, and just applied a one to one hundred uh, exchange rate, which is not what the current yen to like British pound exchange rate is, because I think it's like ninety one pounds for a second row ticket. And yeah. when I went to Kurikan in January, I paid uh, nine thousand yen for the uh, for a second row ticket in Kurikan. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you just apply a one to one hundred exchange rate, that comes out very close. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's the premium of flying in people and everything like yeah. that. I get it. Uh, I would probably pay those prices. I'm not gonna lie, or <sighs> you know. I mean, okay, here's the thing. So I'm not going to go to these shows. I pro- like, There are multiple reasons why. So one, A, it's uh, I already have seen Noah in Japan <laughs> this year. Uh, B, and I don't get why they're doing this in September when at the beginning of September, when one, if you do this one week earlier, you can piggyback off of like the biggest show in Europe. Yeah. Because one or not one week, it's two weeks earlier, but still point still kind of stands uh, like two weeks earlier. Or, no, it one, wait, yeah, no, it's two weeks earlier. So you can piggyback off of uh, all in and right. you already have a lot of people flying in. And then I probably would have done it as well. Like then I probably would have done it when I'm all, like, I'm already going to be in London anyway. Uh, I probably would have just been like, yeah, sure. I might as well just go to the Noah show and just pay that. Pr- I would have probably would have paid that price as well. Uh, and then the other one is, which we're going to talk about after, is that I get another like chance to go see Noah anyway because they're also at the tag team festival in yeah. October. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I think I feel like, but I don't think. Obviously, aside from the first one, I feel like those other two factors also work against this tour for Noah as well. Yeah. So we've got Friday, September 6th at the O2 Academy in Edinburgh. We have Saturday the 7th at the O2 Ritz in Manchester. And then Sunday the 8th at the Electric Ballroom in London. Which is not a big building. That's the other thing. Like they're charging really big prices, but the Electric Ballroom is not a big building. Like, let me just take a look real quick how much how many people that holds. Oh, there it is, capacity. Okay, well, this one actually says it has 1,500, but I think that's standing room for, like, a concert. Yeah. So if you put, like, seats in there, that's going to be, like, a lot less. But mm-hmm. yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, right? It's not like a very large building, and you're charging these prices, and 
I, mean, I don't know how many people are actually going to be wanting to travel in for this. And then do you have enough people in the London area that are willing to pay these prices for... I mean, there's still a while to go. What is right now not a very hot promotion as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, at least they've announced some major talent for it. But then I guess it also depends what matches they're actually going to book for it. To see if they're actually gonna like be able to like sell some decent tickets as well. Mm -hmm. oh, and right. also that it is more expensive than like promotions usually are in the area as well. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Yeah. But yeah, they also announced that Noah's gonna be part of the tag team festival and Probably, as I mentioned earlier, I'm probably going to be there for that. And since it actually said that specifically that they're part of the festival, I might just get, because basically WXW sells like passes when they do these kinds of like uh, free day tournaments where you can either get like, you can buy like individual tickets for the shows or you can buy a tournament pass, which gives you access to like the main like tournament shows. Or you can get a festival pass, which gives you like access to all of the like surrounding shows like Ambition and all of that as well. So since it said it's part of the festival, I I'm probably gonna just shoot a message to like WXW and ask them if that means if I buy a festival pass, I also get access to this like Noah show. And then I'm definitely gonna do that one. Mm. Well, wait and see also who gets announced. Yeah, but I'm probably like I said, I'm probably gonna do the tag tag festival anyway. So mm. if I'm already there, then I feel it is actually kind of uh, bad if I just don't go to the Noah show that is in the town that I'm already in. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So that's Noah. I would say one step forward, two steps back. Yeah, I I am kind of anxious now about that. That title match at the end of the month i don't know where well, i don't know if it's happening and and then if jake wins and then we just go to jake versus vegeta i don't know that just feels like so much the wrong direction and well, that feels I, also, like something think... we've been got, trying they to get exactly away set the, the world on fire to build up for for a rematch yeah that too like she just it just has been pretty just meh overall well we'll see how those weekend shows go and everything mm -hmm. uh so i mean i thought the the tag league was good they did a good job getting a water over kiyomiya mm -hmm. seems to be slowly being rehabbed oh he was great but he's not your guy <laughs> <laughs> and then i mean but he he's not but what i will say and what they have been doing well is because again, it's always the argument, right? Like if you only have a guy for a limited amount of time, what you want to do is you want to get the most out of him. So, and I feel like they're kind of doing that, where they're like building him up, they're giving him a title challenge. And I could actually see him, like this whole thing culminating with him getting a GHC title challenge mm -hmm. and losing, which, and then he like goes back to New Japan. Yes. Which again, that's what you want to do, right? You want to get the most out of the guy while you have him and take, are actually doing a good job. Like, I know, not really all that often recently that we give Noah book, like, credit for the booking, but I, I feel like they're actually, the way that pushing Oiva is really good. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so that is Noah, and then we move on to All Japan. For the Dream Power Series on March 9th at Cork and Hall in front of 1,076 fans, um, which I think is pretty good considering the junior title headlined this show. That's down a bit from recently, but mm -hmm. I mean, I th still think it's a bit of a feather in the cap of uh, Hayato and Dan. Yeah, definitely. I think we didn't we get like a junior headlined Kurrican before. Yes, it was uh, Hayato versus Atsuki. Yeah, and that drew, I think, significantly worse than this. Yeah. If I remember correctly. It did. Uh, so, but also business is up since then. Yes. I um, mean, I think that's like the best 
indication of business being up since then is yeah the fact that they kind of like one of the one half of that match is back here and does significantly better this time around yeah uh, my only critique is they didn't have kento miyahara on uh commentary for that match oh yeah no that he would have <laughs> helped that so much uh so to say open the show we got more actress times uh Mik Miku Aono and Koki defeated Mari and Act. That's Act Asukawa mm-hmm. in 12 with a Styles Clash from Aono on Mary. And again, the last two actress girls matches have been solid. Yeah, I think it also helps that they're putting them at the start of the show. Yeah. Because when they put them in the middle of the show, that was just the absolute death spot because everybody left. Yeah. And I, I putting them at the start, I think, helps them and it helps that the matches have been better too. Uh, Fuminori Abe, Musashi, and Seki Yoshioka defeated Naruki Dori, Ryo Inoue, and Hikaru Sato in 951 when uh, Musashi used the, the Nitsin Ichiru, which is like a emerald flosion type move on Inoue. Uh, very solid opener and a good junior match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Musashi, I mean, yeah. Obviously, they're building him up for a title challenge. Yeah. Uh, and then Takao Mori and Osamu Nishimura have defeated y- Yuma Aoyagi and Seiko Tachibana in 846 when Omori used an axe bar on Tachibana. And I thought to myself, is Omori going to be in the champion carnival? <laughs> well, yeah. I am. I I am. I was actually surprised he wasn't. <laughs> um, because to me, it was all building up to that, especially with him just getting wins nonstop. And, I yeah. think because he's not under contract, you have to like entice him with something to show up. I mean, I guess. Fall guy. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't like Yuma kind of being on the losing side here, but that it's, yeah, whatever. I mean, he's kind of in a holding pattern right now, I feel like, until the carnival. Oh, yeah. Um, this is the comedy match of the show, basically, too. Yeah. Um, then June Saito and Kono defeated Kento Miyahara and Ren Ayabe in 1014 with the psycho break from Saito on Ayabe. Uh, and uh, I'll give it that this was uh, better than I thought it would be. And they're doing some sort of losing streak gimmick with Ayabe clearly and mm-hmm. just getting very frustrated with him. Which I was curious about that one. And I don't remember. No, they, they are in the same block, right? In the carna- Yeah, they are in the same block in the carnival. So I feel like that that's probably going to like lead to something. I don't know when they're going to face each other, but like yeah. maybe Ren gets only one win in the champion carnival and it's over Kento. Yep. And then Ryuki Honda and Yuma Anzai defeated Katsuhiko Nakajima and Hokuto Mori in 1243 where the German suplex hold uh, from Anzai on Omori. This was a good match, and this started, I thought, a hell of a few days for Yuma Anzai. And I will we'll get this later, but I feel like he's incredibly hot right now, actually. Yeah. I mean, I've been saying he's one of the guys I think has an actual genuine chance to beat Nakajima. Mm-hmm. Like, it's and- him, it's the other Yuma, and it's Kento. That's and then for the World Tag Team titles, Suwama and Hideki Suzuki defeated Shotaro Shino in Kuroshio, Tokyo, Japan in 1829 with a backdrop hold from Suwama on Ashino. Boo. To make the first defense. <laughs> first of all, Ashino's entrance in this was awesome. Yes, that was so cool. <laughs> so it's Jiro is doing his thing and his dance. And then he's like, he goes up into the like the orange seats of Corkin, and he's like by like the sort of the entrance mm-hmm. where people come out to go into the orange seats, and he's like dancing around there. And then all of a sudden, like Ashino's music hits, like fuel, and then Ashino comes out through the crowd as well. <laughs> I wonder if he was just like at the like concession stand that is just behind those stairs, just pounding back a beer and then coming outside. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, that, that, uh, that, that was probably the best part of the match, though. <laughs> okay, so I might be a bit of an island here, uh, but I, th- okay, so yeah, fine. It was, I thought the last few minutes of this between Suwama and Ashina were actually pretty good. Yeah, but before that, it was just a bit of a complete nothing match. Okay. Yeah, fine. Like, I don't know. I thought, no, Ashino, like, I, I watched this live. I thought Ashina might win. 
Yeah, no. Just no, given I, the way the match like, is going. No. I don't know. If, to me, it was just never, like, I don't think, I never thought that Ashino or, like, Jiro had a chance here because they were also kind of, like, randomly thrown together. Yeah. Well, Paul, I'm going to bring this up because people yeah. were eyes at Hideki Suzuki, and not without reason, but I have to say <laughs> that Hideki has done more jobs in All Japan since coming into the company in late autumn than Jiro has since returning to the company in late oh, autumn. Oh, for sure. I mean, he's also done a fair number of jobs in Noah as well. I, so, yeah, yeah. Jiro, Jiro never does jobs. Jiro never gets pinned. It's baffling. <laughs> yeah. And, and he, is like, the, he is the most protected. He is more protected than Kento Miyahara. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, he's more protected than Nakaji. Yeah. He's it's, done, I, I don't, Nakaji yeah. has done more jobs than Jiro. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like I said, I, I have kind of switched over to like enjoying Jiro's entrance a lot more. But I don't I, I can't excuse him never losing. Like there's actually no reason why he should not lose. Like he's a he's not a main eventer. Like I don't get it why he never loses. Yeah. I if anything, it would enhance his kind of like whole like entrance thingy and everything if he like lost matches because then like he's like the lovable loser coming out. But yeah. And then in the main event for the world or the PWF World Junior Heavyweight Championship, Rising Hatter defeated Dan Tamer in 2649 with the Sid Vicious to win the title. And so Dan fails on his fourth defense and I had to become the 68th PWF World Junior Heavyweight Champion. Paul, this was pretty great, I thought. I went four and a quarter, didn't quite reach okay. a match of the year level, but I thought this was great. Okay, yeah, because I was actually a bit disappointed really okay like yeah I, I thought actually i actually liked dan's other title defenses more than i like this one and i definitely liked like hayato's previous like title challenges more than i like this one as well so i mean maybe i just went in with too high expectations but to me it just never got to that next level basically it's yeah i can't really put my finger on it but i kind of like watched it and i was like no, it was you're not alone. I, I saw that um I know like I, I know people that loved the match like I did, and I saw people that were like, Oh, it didn't quite get up there as well. Yeah. No, because yeah, I can't I can't really say why it never got there for me, but it yeah, it just didn't. And I felt it was like maybe a little bit too long as well. And maybe it was that where like I felt like maybe they could have peaked it a little bit earlier and that would have been better. Mm-hmm. And so that was that show. I mean, and then Musashi came out to challenge Hayato, mm -hmm. but Hayato felt like a star. Yes. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it definitely was the 100% right decision to, like, put this belt on Rising Hayato. Oh, yeah, like, it was time. He, especially especially with, with Atsuki out. Yeah. yeah. And so that was... Like, you have to make this guy the ace now. I mean, I, I mean, an injury is never good. But I think you can work it into the story of like Eski returning and trying to reclaim his spot as the junior ace. Yeah, and I would probably just leave this belt on Hayato for however long it takes Atsuki to come back. Yeah, because if they don't, if because like with Atsuki gone, they're either going to do Hayato's going to get like three or four defenses, then drop it to some outsider. Classic yeah. Japan. You but... know who would make a lot of sense as an outsider to come in and become the next champion? Who? Ryusuke Taguchi. Because <laughs> think about Hayato's the 68 champion. Oh, so right. So who's the next one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and Taguchi is doing nothing in New Japan right now. Nope. Uh, I... <laughs> uh, you know, I'm I'm not like I'm like can he hear Taguchi, the despair. Can, can, Taguchi can still wrestle when he wants to be serious, but I'm not sure that that's what all Japan needs right now is another outs well, they're gonna do it. No, 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 absolutely not. Absolutely not. I just saw that he became the 68 champion and I immediately yeah. started thinking of Taguchi. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean if they want to go and they want to keep this on Hado for a long time, I, they should. Yes. Because I think it just makes perfect sense to like 
have him hold this title. Or at the very least, even if he doesn't hold the belt until Atsuki is back, because it might be a while until Atsuki is back. It could be a year, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he should at the very least be champion whenever Atsuki comes back. Yeah, and then they should sure. do that as a match. Yeah. So that was the Corkin show. Then we go to the uh, Dream Power series in GMS Gunma on uh, March 10th in front of 651 fans. Now, this was the show with the Yoshie match. And this didn't air live, but the Yoshie match was removed from the VOD. Yeah. Which uh, was not surprising, I suppose. Uh, Dan Tamara and Musashi defeated Rising Hado Mazada in 1858. <laughs> with diving press on Musashi from Mazada. This is yes, that was an opening match that almost went 20 minutes, but uh, it was fine. I mean, I didn't think it was bad at all, honestly. I but I was like so surprised when this just kept going. <laughs> yeah, like I was like, what? Why is is this the this is the opener? Why is this still go? I actually almost thought they were going to go like time limit draw on this one. And then, uh, speaking of holding patterns, Yuma Aoyagi defeated Fuma in seven minutes and 40 minutes <laughs> with the Fool. And Fuma came yeah. out with, like, a prop rifle. And so they're, they're then proceeded to be comedy around the prop rifle. Like, Yuma, like, being scared. And then Yuma actually got the rifle and pointed it at Fuma. And Yeah, yeah they just really started shooting on each other. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, it even carried over into the backstage because, like, after the match, Fuma then still attacked Yuma with the rifle after the match. Mm-hmm. Right? Because they cut, like, the backstage because it was, like, this one didn't air live. So they, they included, like, all of the backstage interviews and Fuma, like, attacked Yuma Aoyagi after the match. Mm-hmm. So who knows what's happening here? And then, uh, so we skip the Yoshie match. And so Jun Saito and Toshizo defeated Kento Miyahara and Ren Ayabe in 1614 with the psycho break from Saito on Ayabe. Um, mm-hmm. This was actually pretty good for a 16-minute match with, with Toshizo and all of them. And again, like more of the Kento and Ayabe stuff. Yeah. No, I, I'm I, like I said, I think this is this might be leading to something. Yeah, especially since they then since they got put into the same block as well. So, yeah, to me that that is not an accident for sure. And then uh, Suwama Hideki Suzuki and Hikaru Sato defeated Shitaro Shino Kuroshi of Tokyo Japan and Seiko Tachibana in eleven fifty one by referee stop. Uh, Suwama uh, got the stoppage when he put Tachibana in the Manriki sleeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you've seen this all. Bo- I mean, there wasn't much to this match, honestly. I thought. Yeah, no. I mean, it's also like Tachibana just keep... I mean, I guess get that they don't put any respect on the Gaora TV title, but he just keeps taking loss after loss. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think the one of the interesting things, though, was uh, they did, like, the backstage here where, like, there at least seemed to be some sort of, like, dissension between Jiro and Tachibana. So I feel like we might get, like, a... Uh, Gay or a TV title match between the two at some point. Well, Jiro's going to win that. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then never lose the belt. Going to go on a Yoshitatsu like reign. <laughs> I mean, he is the new Yoshitatsu, like for all intents and purposes. Sort of, yeah. And I would say he is better than, he is more entertaining than Yoshitatsu. Oh, yeah. Oh. God, yes. <laughs> no question. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, again, like very similar also in the way that both men just weirdly are weirdly protected in the booking and never take losses until you are excluding Yoshitatsu's last year. Mm-hmm. So then we go to the Yuma Anzai local triumphal Return commemoration match and and triple crown skirmish. Rocky Honda and Yuma Anzai defeated Katsuhiko Nakajima and Hartley Jackson in 1846 with the German suplex hold from Anzai on Jackson. I thought this was pretty good. I mean, I thought Anzai's uh, stuff with Nakajima, which was like the focal point for maybe like two thirds of the match, was awesome. And then, you know, 
Jackson gets in there and like throws Anzai around and then gets hits a bunch of power moves and Anzai survives before winning. So once again, Anzai just looked like a million bucks. Mm-hmm. And I would say this was what probably one of the times where like Hartley Jackson actually has looked pretty decent recently. Yes. Well, like he looked a lot better than normally does. Yeah. Well, I mean, Nakajima yeah. worked like most of the first half of this match. Yes. Like, yes. And but everything still. like that. Um, yeah. I, yeah, so I don't know. We'll we'll get to we'll talk more about him in a second. So um, that did well in, in setting up Anzai, and then the Dream Power series on March twelfth at Shinkiba in front of three hundred forty two fans, super no vacancy, full house. Musashi defeated Rio Inoue in uh, nine forty six with the Tortura, which again another solid little opener. Yeah, uh, I, I really enjoyed that one. I, yeah. Musashi fits in really well. Like we'll see if he actually sticks around long term because I would assume he's going to lose to Hayato, but he definitely has been like again the junior division needs like this roster in general needs bodies. So if he can keep him around, I would keep him around. Yeah, definitely. And then Yuma Aoyagi and Hikaru Sato defeated Hokuto Amori and Seki Yoshioka in ten forty seven when uh, Yuma pinned Hokuto with the Japanese leg roll clutch hold. Mm-hmm. Those guys are in the same block. Also, who knows? Maybe it means something. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and I think, was this the first time where Yoshioka actually brought out his new bells? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, because he won the, the Zero One Junior Bells at the Zero One anniversary show. Yeah. And so this is the... This is... Okay, oh God, I was about to say this is the real Zero One, but it's not the real Zero It's the... You know what I mean? It's the actual yeah. zero one, not real zero. Oh god, this is yeah. so confusing. The real zero one. <laughs> yeah. The original zero one. The original zero one, yes. Uh so that means I probably not gonna be not the real that. fake zero one or fake yeah. real zero one, whatever. So that means he's uh not gonna probably be doing any jobs in all Japan. <laughs> yeah. That kind of puts a bit of a damp now on him potentially getting a junior title match, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh god, that would be so I think him or Sahara would be <laughs> So yeah. Awesome. Uh Shotaro Shino and Kuroshio Tokyo Japan defeated Dan Tamara and Ren Ayabe in 947s with the ankle lock from Shino on Ayabe. Um mm-hmm. not much to this, but no. again, it's just finishing that's continue or sorry, not finishing, continuing the story. Ren has to finish the story. Yes, uh, because again, it's not like again, Dan is a junior, and I get it, he just held the title, but still it was Ayabe that took the pin here, so. Yeah, like I said, I the more I think about it, the more it makes sense that this whole like losing streak ends with him beating Kento. Yeah, so I mean, the thing is, like, Ren was announced with Shuji on that Limit Break show teaming, mm-hmm. but like, mm-hmm. if they're going, if they're building stories around Ren Abe, he's he's probably in all Japan for like past the carnival, right? Has to be, yeah, unless they just drop him out for the entire. But again, then why That's is the most set up humiliating a story? Of Kento? Yeah, why? Well, like, why would you agree to that unless they pay you really well? Oh, this company has done that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. They were still doing storylines with Yusuke Okada when he was eating shit. Yeah, but he was also an actual like young boy yeah, and like yeah. under contract. And Renya Yabe is a, is a freelancer who could just be like, "No, fuck off! I'm not. I'm sticking over here with with the big dog." Yeah. So, so there has to be something more to this than just him losing all the time yeah um then june Saito defeated seiko tachibata in 757 with the psycho break which i thought was a fun little match like you know i mean tachibata is the kind of guy that's going to bump around for june and everything like that so i had a lot of fun with this match yeah he just flew around everywhere yeah. and then you had june put on the uh the tachibana so, glasses after the match and, and do his hair with the tachibana yeah. glasses on mm-hmm which got a lot of pop, which got a big pop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima defeated Fuminori Abe in 656, the Northern Lights bomb. Uh, well, Paul, I think I had myself up a little too much for this because it was good, but mm-hmm. I don't even think it was as good as these two could do in seven minutes. Uh, yeah. There were some really cool sequences, like uh, Abe re- like reversing the uh, the kick. Yeah, but 
definitely another victim of high expectations. <laughs> I will say that because I was also going into this with sky high expectations and it was good, but yeah, could, I, I, it could have been so much more. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, in the main event, old age versus new age, Ryuki Honda, Yuma Anzai and Rising Hado defeated Suwama, Kento Miyahara and Hideki Suzuki in 21, 27. Uh, when uh, Anzai used a German suplex hold on Suwama, I thought this was a pretty good match. I think I like the tag match with Hartley Jackson a little more than this. Mm -hmm. uh, what I thought was a little silly was that Anzai basically pinned Suwama because Suwama had a communication breakdown with his partners. Yeah, as he always does. And... Yeah, but still, this was another big like win for uh, Yuma Anzai. Absolutely. So... Second time he's pinned Suwama now. Yep. As well. So we'll so, see maybe because I feel like it's gonna be again Suwama just getting his win back in a Champion Carnival like they did last year. Yeah. You mean Hideki? But Hideki still. Oh I mean oh, Hideki. Oh, oh, no, Suwama's also not yeah, yeah, over Anzai. Yeah. Um, uh, so I feel that Anzai feels so hot right now, and I'm very hyped for that match. On March 30th. Against Nakajima? Yeah, yeah, same. So we'll go to that. Oda Ward Gym. This is not the official match order. This is just because uh, that's what it says on all Japan websites. So, But it seems like it could be the official match order. Um, but maybe the tag team title will be moved up. Kaz Hayashi, Seki Yoshioka, Fuminori Abe versus Naruki Dori, Sego Tachibana, and Ryo Inoue. Nice little mm -hmm. match. Yep. Takao Mori and Osama Nishimura versus Kono and Toshizo. <laughs> uh, sure be... why not <laughs> oh we i mean this is pretty much oh this is actually the match for like uh uh political fate like oh, you actually oh, have to let, let this go to we a totally draw. forgot hmm? to talk about the angles on the cork and hall show because taru was yes. there I, I i thought you were gonna bring this up here <laughs> and uh we get to the match in the kento and ayabe match with june and mm -hmm. ono and then, you know, the powder got thrown by Taru. And then Ray Saito comes through the crowd wearing a sling. And then after the tag team match, they come out again. And then June Saito makes a challenge. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be June and Kono challenging. But then Ray Saito rips the sling off. Yeah, and We're he's back. He's back. And uh, they, just got, they should just put the titles back on the Saitos, right? Well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so road to the champion. This is going to be a traditional voodoo murders match, so expect that. I mean, road the thing though is for political favors, who are you going to win here? Which position do you think is more important? The one yeah. that Shimura holds or the one that uh Toshizo holds? Well, Toshizo he does jobs. Oh, okay, true. Yes, yeah, so he can have well, Nishimura see, win. So you get Nishimura is a, is a person in, in what Bunkayo. Which yeah. is in the center of Tokyo. And Toshizo is somewhere in Saitama, maybe? Oh, yeah, okay. Then, yeah, you want to keep think... favorable dates on Kurokan. So, like yeah, in the, in, in the greater went... Tokyo area, but not in Tokyo proper. Is it, I, I thought, wasn't, he, wasn't he in the ward that is that has Kurokan? That's Nishimura. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, and Nishimura, that's why, like, you want to keep in the good graces of Nishimura. <laughs> I just want to double check where... Um... Where is, uh, let's see here. Whoever is under that mask. Yeah, he's, uh, oh, Siama. Ah. In, in, in Saitama Prefecture. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. sorry, like, C Central Tokyo is outranked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Road to the Champion Carnival, Eight Man Tag Match, Kento Miyahara, Hokuto Omori, Kurosu, Tokyo, Japan. And Ren Ayabe versus Yuma Aoyagi, Shitaro Ashino, Ryuki Honda, and Hartley Jackson. I'm assuming Ayabe is getting pinned here again. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that makes the, absolutely the most sense here. And then uh, World Tag Team Championship, Suwama Hideki Suzuki versus Jun Saito and Rei Saito. What do you think is going to happen here? I would just put the belts back on the Saitos. Because again, that... it was clear. Because it was clear. Like I mean, now it's clear that Kento and uh, Yuma weren't going to win, right? And at that point, I feel like the Saitos were going, just going to hold the bells through the Champion Carnival. I mean, I could have seen 
Suwama and Hideki beating the Saitos later. If eventually, if yeah. And another thing is like we don't know if Ray is going to be in the Champion Carnival or not because he said he wanted to be in. Hmm. Right. But then it makes more sense for Ray to be in it. Like he has more of a claim to be in it if he wins the title here. Right. But also you could do like an injury angle with Ray. Uh, where it's like, oh, you you want to be in, but you're not actually you're, not ready. Where like, yeah. He, he like taps him out. And then the side of sort chase. Of and win like the real world tag league or something. Oh, that's a while though. I don't. Yeah. Don't think you want to have Suwama Titeki hold the belts for that long. Yeah, uh, we'll see. I mean, I could go either way. I'm I'm actually leaning towards the Saitos regaining them. Yeah, I, I think the Saitos were like on a good run, and hopefully you can like regain like at least some of the momentum that you lost when Ray got injured by like just giving the, them the belts right back. Yeah, like it just makes the most sense. Um, and then the world. Oh, sorry. Uh, in the All Asia Tag Team Title Match, Atsushi Onita and Toy uh, versus Hikaru Sato and Dan Tamara. Yeah, it's time. Oh yeah, I yeah, know. Bring these belts back to All Japan, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. And it gives something for Dan and, and Sato to do. Yeah, uh, because they all again at the uh, I forgot, but uh, the the. Uh, the Yuma Anzai homecoming show where uh, they did all of the backstage stuff. And there they also had Dan, I think, because all of the other people, like I mean, Hideki isn't an evolution, but like all Subama tag team partners, he's kind of affiliated with them now. Uh, they did like a thing where like all of them have belts except for Dan now. So yeah, I think it just makes sense for them to win here. Yeah. For sure. And Onita just he needs to lose that belt. Like he it's dire. Like it's been dire for years, but it's just gotten real bad now. Like it's it's actually kind of embarrassing if you keep the belt on him. Have they announced that if this is gonna be like another like exploding bad match or not? No word yet. Because Oh, I don't even want to know what this would be like if this is just a, like, why would you even book it if it's just a normal match? I don't know. I don't know. So it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> just get the titles off of them. Yes. And then PWF World Junior Champion, World Junior Heavyweight Championship match, Rising Hado versus Musashi. Uh, well, I'm assuming Hado wins. I guess it's a not, I, you can't say it's a zero chance Musashi wins. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, if you know, because again, what if they're slotting him into the uh, role that was previously held by uh, Atsuki and prior to that by Koji Iwamoto? What was always the booking pattern with those two? They win the belt, then comes an outsider. They lose the belt to the outsider. They chase the outsider. They win back the belt. Then another in comes another outsider, and then the outsider wins the belt, and they chase the outsider. So. I hope they finally break that booking rhythm of fire too and just give him a good long reign. Yeah, for sure. And then in the main event for the Triple Crown, Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Yuma Anzai. I agree that Yuma Anzai feels like he could has a better chance of winning this compared to all the other challengers Nakajima's faced. But... Um, I, I'm still very, very solidly behind Nakajima. Mm -hmm. Especially because he's not in the carnival, actually. Okay, because that was actually going to be my question, if that changed your mind in some way, the fact that Nakajima is not in the carnival. No. No, it hasn't. So it actually made you think it makes it more likely that Nakajima is going to defend. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Because to me, it's kind of the opposite. I feel like because he isn't in the carnival that maybe this is where his run comes to an end but then obviously he never Kento never gets that win back which would yeah. also be incredibly weird yeah no Kento's finishing the story I mean we hope so but yeah I mean but it is also weird that the trip like when was the last time that the triple crown champion wasn't in the carnival uh, I don't know I could probably figure it out but 
I'm going to do it right now because it'll take a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That, that's going to take a while. So it is very weird. But then again, with Nakajima, it kind of makes sense with his character that he's not in there. And obviously, they still have the thing where he's undefeated in singles matches. Yeah. So, yeah. It, I think it, it he's not in there because they didn't want anyone. He didn't want, they didn't want him to lose a singles match before. Yeah, exactly. Like that. That makes a lot of sense, but I feel like, again, it would make sense if they put it on Yuma. It would be incredibly early. It would be like absurdly early <laughs> to pull yeah. the trigger on him already. But I can't completely rule it out because, as you've been saying, he is very hot right now. Yeah, like he is so incredibly over. They already like at the beginning of the year gave him that honor to have the match. What? very well could be the last match of Fuji's. Like the last, like it might just be the last singles match of Fuji's career. Yeah. And he, they put him over really strongly afterwards. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, it's obvious that he's going to win this belt eventually. Oh, for sure. And it might still be this year. <laughs> it could still, yeah, it could still be this year. Yeah. So, so let's get to the I, Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, just, I just to, Finishing it off, I would probably put it at 70-30. So 70% Nakajima defense, 30% Anzai wins. And then, so we move to the Champion Carnival 2024. And uh, so Block A, Shotaro Shino, Kento Miyahara, Yuma Aoyagi, Hoko Tomori, Ren Ayabe, Hiroshio Tokyo Japan, and Cyrus. Block B, Suwama. Ryuki Honda, Jun Saito, Yuma Anzai, Hideki Suzuki, Hartley Jackson, and Lord Crew. <laughs> Paul, have you ever seen Lord Crew before? No, but I saw a picture of him and I immediately thought, oh, I guess they couldn't get uh, booking on bookings on Gianni Valletta because he's busy in Dragon Gate. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Which, by uh, the way, I don't think we ever touched on that. Can we no. just very briefly talk about how fucking weird it is that Gianni Valletta ended up in Dragon Gate of all promotions? I mean, did Kai get him in there? I mean, who else? Like, what else would be the connection here? <laughs> and they're teaming together. Yeah. Like, so that's just such a weird fit in terms of styles. It is. Has he and size and seen him look? at all? No, I haven't. From what I've seen, he really has just incredibly short matches as well. Yes, I do see that in the results. So oh. I've, yeah, I've, very, very odd. But at least from what I've heard, Lord Crew is actually supposed to be pretty decent. Uh, yes, so he's a good brawler from what I've heard. Yeah, which I think that would fit in really well. And people have kind of been poo-pooing Block B a bit, but I don't know. I don't think it's that bad of a block. I th I think it's weaker than A. Yes, for sure. Because Block A has some of the best wrestlers on the planet. So, um, so the question is, are they expanding it? And I just say that there's enough block shows for them to expand it to eight men per block. Mm-hmm. And I would Ray Saito in block A. a. Yep. And uh, I don't know who in block. I don't think they're just going to put Nakajima in there. I mean, here's the thing, though. If Nakajima loses to Anzai, then you can put him in there. Yeah. And then you can get Kento getting his win back over Nakajima in the final. Yep. That, that makes so. sense. I have finals in a big building or like for like maybe 4,000 people possibly. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's why we sort of figured out for Yokohama Buntai. And also given that uh, that stardom show, I mean, who the fuck is even going to be on there when start like, because stardom like gets first dibs on the building, right? But given all of the turmoil there, we don't even know who's going to be on that show. What's so the who knows that what number show? they're going to draw? Uh, because everyone's leaving that can leave at the end of March. Yeah, I think it is actually after. I think it's after March. I think it is okay. in April. 
Okay, so it's yeah, the that'll be after building. Mm. Like, when is the building actually officially opening? Because I think it doesn't open until, uh, until like April. Just see until you yeah. come up winter. But yeah, but still, like, if you wanna have like a big splat, like if like stardom kind of doesn't draw that well in there, right? You want to have like that first big splash in that building, then you know that's your perfect chance. And you want to put so it has five, uh, it has a capacity of five thousand seats, mm -hmm. according to the website. So yeah. if you like, again, you need a big match for that. And what bigger match do you have right now than Kanto versus Nakajima? But you might not want to announce that Nakajima is in there until he actually takes his first loss. Again, right? He takes his first loss to Anzai. And then what better way to like very quickly, like rebuild him by putting him in the carnival afterwards? Yeah, exactly. So... You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, were there any surprises in this? Hardly Other than Lord Crew, Jackson. yeah, Lord Crew, obviously. I guess, I mean, Hardly Jackson kind of getting booked a lot more was a bit of a tip off, yeah. I guess Takao Mori not being in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought they might have to just because of how thin the roster is. Uh, yeah. no one from DDT, yeah. No, no, no real like outsiders. At, like, well, no real outsiders outside of like Hartley nope. Jackson and Lord no Crew. Great. No. Um. I don't. Is there any great in all Japan uh, cooperation on the in, in on the uh, horizon? I don't even think so. No, because they also now announced a great in DDT. I know. Uh, so joint show me, as well. They got me a little thinking about like what's that status of that relationship. Yeah, I mean. I can definitely because there was a lot of the like reporting as well was that the relationship between all Japan and like other promotions have kind of soured a bit, right? Yep. So I feel like yeah. So, eh. although I suppose great needs all Japan more than all Japan needs great. Yeah, exactly. I, I still feel like that relationship makes more sense to keep up from all Japan's perspective for like if and when great like ever goes under to like swoop in and like pick up a bunch of people from there yeah for sure but then again it's not like they ever had a great relation well obviously they didn't have a great relationship with Vessel one uh but they still managed to get like a good chunk of people from there yeah because no one's going to take everyone exactly i mean the one you want from like the people you really want from there are like t-hawk and hayato tamara that's like the crown jewels kaito ishida yeah. i guess I take Soma and Takanori Ito. Oh yeah, no, I mean Takanori, but Ito, I feel like is a guy you can definitely get anyway. Like I yeah, feel yeah. like people that will be in high demand if Great goes under. Will, I would like, take I would take on. Azuchi and Yu Azuka, but I don't know if they if all Japan would go for them. Yeah, they might be a bit too small. Um, I definitely take Minoru Tanaka. Yeah, he would just go back to freelancing yes. or retire. Yeah. Um yeah, I wanted El to watch... Lindemann after this last like junior title reign, I'm kinda like I don't yeah. know. <laughs> uh, I I wanted to watch uh Haido Tamara versus Minoru Tanaka for the uh G Rex title, but I didn't get around to it. But that's yeah, up, they, did, they did five hundred and ninety eight in Cork and that's uh not great. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> uh I don't know. I mean they they survived this long, but how long can they survive? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, how? Yeah, Lidette just seems to be happy, just kind of funneling money in there. So who knows? Yeah, I'm like sure. at least funnel enough money into to keep it alive. Yeah. Um, just make enough money with like their bars, I guess. As long as people keep drinking alcohol in Japan, yeah, it will be fine. So they'll be fine forever. <laughs> so. Anyway, like I said, there's 10 block shows plus the finals. So you can do uh, eight man blocks if you had to. Mm -hmm. And there's some big buildings in there as well. So you do want to put on like, you can't just spread out like league matches too much as well, right? Champion Carnival matches too much. Well, there's not really big. Well, the finals is big. 
there's only two Korokins at the beginning in the last block show. Mm -hmm. And then it's like... Yeah, Nicole true. They used to have like three Korokins, right? Yeah. So they got like Osaka Edion in the middle mm -hmm. of the tour. Usually sometimes it's towards the end. They got Nagoya International mm -hmm. Conference Hall. Um, Kurobe, Dream Mess Miyagi, Sanyo Public Welfare Hall. Those are like super big halls. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so that's the carnival. So I'm I mean, I'm going with the chalk pick, Hideki and Kento in the finals. Yeah, I mean, you need... I, I feel like Kento feels like a safe pick to go to the finals, regardless of yeah. what so happens you're, between you're Anzai building, and you need the biggest Nakajima. Draw. Yeah, definitely. Which, again, it, it's kind of interesting that they didn't then put Yuma in the B block. Uh, Yuma Eoyagi, I mean. Because uh, mm -hmm. that, in theory, if you don't have... Nakajima in there, that's the biggest match you can do. Yeah. But yeah, from the way, like, I think Hideki would make a lot of sense that they're basically just redoing what they did with him in, what Noah did with him in the N1. Yeah. Where he goes to the final and puts over Nakajima there. Ah, Nakajima. Kento there. <laughs> he definitely doesn't put over Nakajima. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's not happening. No. So, oh, again, that actually would be interesting if they then put Nakajima in there in the B block with Hideki. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a 30-minute draw right there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, yeah, uh, I think Kento is definitely a lock. And then if Nakajima doesn't get put into the B block, then, yeah, I also feel like Hideki is the one that makes a ton of sense. Oh, also, to go uh, through. I'm calling it now. I don't want Harley Jackson or Lord Crew is pinning Hideki. Yeah. No, I could definitely see that. Do we know who, what, what kind of like crew Lord Cruz hangs with normally? Uh, he's from Cincinnati, so in the Ohio Indies. Ah, okay, so he wouldn't be anyone that would have like direct contacts with Hideki then? Um, no, I don't think so. Like, I'm, I don't even know who's on that scene that, um, Well, that's like yeah, friends. Like basically, entire scene is just friends of Sammy Callahan and uh, Moxley. Yeah, I don't even see him on any of those Callahan shows. Revolver. Oh, okay, yeah. So, but again, then he wouldn't be like a guy that would have ever hung around with like the grapple guys that he take hung out with while he no, was in no, Europe no. Uh, in WWE. No. So yeah, I, I I'm just sort of curious. How like they find Lord Crew, like who's watching these matches? Yeah, it was reported in the Observer that, uh, and because Dave clearly talks to Davy Boy Smith mm -hmm. Jr., but uh, that like Ishikawa was Smith's contact point guy. Yeah, and he very, but he wouldn't have like, because yeah, he mainly works like Paradigm. Yeah. No, wait. He probably was Hideki because he's a par right paradigm is UWFI stuff. Yes, he does do that stuff. So then it might have actually been Hideki then. Because Hideki probably watches paradigm. <laughs> Maybe. That's funny. That's true. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll be curious. Like, honestly, I don't like, I, I thought. Davy Boy Smith Jr. look thought fit in well, but like I think uh all Japan should just try to like develop its own like hidden gem foreigners. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Because it's been a while since they've had like I like Cyrus well enough, but it's not like I would call him like a hidden gem. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's a long term uh no uh uh guy, but he's fine, he's good for the tournaments, I think. Mm -hmm. And everything I mean, again, I, I, I would do what they've done where they like brought in, for example, like I Le Blanc or like a yeah. tour. Like I would do more like random grab bags of like Europeans and just see if one of them sticks. Yeah, for sure. Right. Because again, Big Japan has done really well with that. Yeah. And Big there, are, there is a ton of talent on that. Tour. That all Japan can. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, bring in like a Peter Dehani or like Mike DiVecchio. I don't think Fennec actually has really a lot of interest. 
Actually, I mean, you know what? Robert Dreisker actually would fit him pretty well in uh in all Japan. Because mm. he is kind of like a bigger, like hard hitting lad. So I think that act that actually would work. Like I think he actually wouldn't fit him pretty well. But I think he's actually the head trainer in the W he's the head trainer in the WXW like Academy, so he probably doesn't have time for Japan to us. <laughs> yeah, so I mean I don't know how to feel about this lineup. It's it's sort of not what I expected. I don't think it's bad by any means, but I I yeah. just don't know. I don't. I mean, yeah, it's missing that big flashy like outsider. I think. Well, I, it's an it, it's not a good time that all Japan has possibly soured their relationships with other companies. Yeah, because you have like it's funny how much it like. The fact that matters losing to Kawamori, even though he was in the spot that he now was and he's at his age, like hmm? just need the bodies. Yeah. I mean, it really is a bad time to go like isolationist right now. Yeah. No, they just don't have enough people on the roster to do that. Yeah. Right. Like, I, you I'm need assuming... to bring in some bodies from outside. Now, I find the DDT thing very curious. That DDT decided to go with great. No, I mean that they couldn't get a DDT guy. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, like, we still have, like, we technically still have, like, has that happened yet? The Anza and Honda title challenge? No, it's this weekend. It's, oh, we should talk about oh. that. This weekend on the yeah. 17th. I don't know what I'm going to watch. Well, I'm probably going to, I think the DDT show starts before, so I'll start with that. But we've got Yuma Aoyagi versus Kanosuke Takeshita, and then um, Ryuki Honda and Yuma Anza challenging for the KOD tag titles. Uh, from uh, Hiroshima and um, uh, Yuji Ino, right? That's the team, mm-hmm. right? Yes, I think. Oh. So, I mean, Inside Honda got to win those tag titles, right? Yeah, because I feel like that's the deal here. Where like you want to do this too? You're like... essentially offering up your number yeah. two star to do a job. Yeah, so you have to get something in return. So, I so I'm just and. Obviously, like one of their guys holds the All Asia Tag Titles and could still hold the All Asia Tag Titles after March 30th. Hopefully not, but that's nothing against Toy. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's only <laughs> the problem there. Uh, yeah. So this relationship is not done. I just find it curious they couldn't get anyone because, like, they gave Ray Saito to DDT. Yeah, the, I mean the Dio. Actually, just talking about Ray because we were like, okay, well, if they put Ray into the carnival, who else might they put in? What if actually after Anzai wins, and again, oh. Block B has both Honda and Anzai in it, uh, what if they put like Hiroshima in Block B? I mean, that's very possible. If they put a DDT guy in Block B, that would be very happy with that. I I don't care. I'll take Yuji you know, in Block B. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, he For sure. I mean, he's wrestling seriously now, so he's fine. He's actually not bad at all. Yeah, no, no, no. He is actually solid now. Uh, no, wait, who's actually so the chaos? So gets it's Endo and Eno are the champions right now. Yeah. Oh, Endo and Eno. Why did I think Hiroshima? I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I I'll take Endo. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, but that's a that's getting way too. That's a big. That's big. Yeah. That's like that. There's way too much complication here. I don't even want to figure out the like politics of like Endo and Titeki Suzuki. That's that's way too much of a headache. Uh, yeah, 30 minute draw or double count out. Yeah. Or Endo gets to shoot knocked out again. <laughs> Actually, yeah, no, there's no way they're putting Endo in with, I don't, there's no way DDT puts Endo within 50 feet of Katsuhiko Nakajima at any point. No. Yeah, no, Endo's out. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll take any solid DDT guy except for Daisuke Sasaki, basically. Yeah. Um, MJ Paul, up you come. Oh, well, I mean, I think is Higuchi gonna be in the states during the champion carnival because I knew he was doing West Coast Pro. I don't know, but uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm still holding him. That feels the, 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 you, you will hold on to that until <laughs> the end of time. But look, I, I'll I'll share with you if that happens. I'm just at this point, yeah. I'm, I don't know. But why. there's <laughs> there's solid guys that like you could. Um, Yuji Hino seems to be out of DDT, right? He hasn't yes, worked remember? them at all this year, yeah. He um 
he left to take more time with his family, but I still think he's doing indie dates occasionally. Yeah, yeah, he's done some dates, but yeah, he's done with DDT. So, I mean, there's a lot of people on that roster that I think I would be very happy, like okay, so uh, or something. Higuchi's uh, American date is uh, April 14th, which is before the carnival, technically. Mm -hmm. So he could make it back, yeah. Although I could also see Higuchi doing an AEW date as well, so maybe that would keep him. Yeah. But I would you take like a Chris Brooks? Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um who else? I would take um Okatani. Yeah, for sure. No problem with that at all. And plus you could beat him. Yeah. And, and give him and he's already worked with most of those guys. Yeah, yeah, no, those those are all True statements. <laughs> Let me see who else we got. Uh, Yuki Onaya, I'd take. I mean, it's all Japan. Mm. Why not? Mm, yeah, it would fit in like well, like style wise. Uh, let's see who else. Don't think you're getting Ueno. No. Oh, what about Takeshi Misada? Yeah. I mean, if you want to put in like a younger guy and where it's like easy to have him get beaten. Yeah. But I draw the line at the Hondas and the Takanashis and the Daisuke Sasakis and the yeah. Yeah. Um What about Abju Nakiyama? Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, you know? I, Ma, I'd take Mao. Mao. Mao is one, but he's the universal champion, yeah. so that makes it complicated. Shunma would be too small, though. Because Shunma was another one I was thinking about. I, I, all Japan has always been a bit easier on like the size restrictions when it is an outsider, but yeah, yeah he might be a bit too much. Yeah, he's, small, he's no, smaller than T Hawk. Yeah, he's you no, know, he's way, way smaller than T Hawk. Yeah, he is 167. Yeah, at 5'7 or 5'6, right? Yeah, 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 5'6. So, no. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, I think that's too that's small. that's way he's smaller than most of the juniors in all Japan. Yeah, he's smaller than most juniors. Yes. Um. Yeah, I mean, Yuki Ino, I would absolutely take. Yeah, serious Yuki Ino, absolutely. And I think that's probably the most realistic because it's not going to be like, he, he, you know. the Yeah, he just lost politics, the tag titles. Politics of that sense. are not. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we do have speculation for something that mm, could very well not happen. Yeah, it could also just be Endo just like pins Honda and that's it. I still think that's a bad move. I, I think and that would be insane. All Japan if, basically yeah. got... Uh, no, I can't believe All Japan would agree to all that. No, there, there's no way they agree to like Yuma loses to like Takeshita and then on the same show the two young upcoming stars also lose in the main event. That just and makes them look like lose? absolute shit. Even if like Honda's getting pinned if they do lose, but for Anzai to like lose that a high profile match like that, like two weeks before his big challenge, I don't. It just looks yeah, bad. that's bad too. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to assume that this DDT and All Japan relationship is not dead. Yeah, I think it's fair to say, probably in most likelihood. I mean, it it is very dead if they lose. <laughs> yes. Yes, if they don't win the tag titles. It is, it is, uh, it is, it is, it is got to be dead because there's nothing yeah. upcoming between them and everything like that. No. So, um, yeah, it would have been nice to get. Well, uh, again, I'm holding out hope they go to the 16 man tournament, uh, because that just feels strange to have leave Ray out of it. It feels very small. Like it feels like a very small tournament for like the schedule that they have. Yeah, it is. Like so. I, all I know is that a eight I did the math, an eight man round robin tournament or two of two blocks is fifty six matches. Yeah. And they have ten block shows. So that's five point six matches per show. Yeah. Which again fills it out pretty nicely. The schedule, like obviously you're not gonna do like this. Obviously you can't do the same amount of matches on each show. Uh, you're probably gonna like backload it and towards Corican and maybe do like 
yeah, alternating blocks or whatever. But yeah. Yeah, and like, uh, so and like, I think a, a, a seven match, a seven match thing is like, um, like forty two or something matches, yeah, or something like, like very, that's a lot less. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, like these shows are going to be kind of like thin on matches or like tournament matches anyway. Yeah, because then you have to like fill that up with like six mat tag matches and everything. And again, you don't have a very fake roster anyway. Yeah. So. So yeah. So I mean, I I guarantee you, if this tournament's growing, we're gonna know by by March thirtieth. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So anyway, that's all Japan. I would say that. Uh, I am still pretty optimistic on their direction. And I mean, Anzai feels so hot right now. So I'm very excited about that March 30th show. I actually feel like the, they do they regain momentum if Sawama and Tideki like lose the tag titles. Yes. Or rather, if just the Saitos went back, because I feel like that was kind of the moment where like things, like I, I think going off the rails feels a bit strong, but very clearly dampened their momentum a bit and they can probably like regain that, like, if the Saitos just win them back. So who's um who's do okay the Saitos win who's doing a job? So uh, Yeah. He's their large dad anyway. I think he's fi- I think he's happy doing that. He just lost to Anzai. Yeah. I think we're finally getting to that stage where oh, yeah. it becomes a lot more normalized that Suwama loses matches now. Yeah. And um And he's gonna lose to Hideki. I would assume yeah. that Suwama and Hideki is the last block night. Yeah, yeah, I mean Hideki gets his win back over Suwama and goes through to the final. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that is all Japan. And that is, I think, it for us, unless there was anything else that you saw or watched that was uh of interest. Uh no. Like I said, I've been uh a bit under the weather, <laughs> so no. I so uh, we'll, really we'll, watched anything. We'll be back. Uh, I guess probably we, we won't be back until April because we're gonna wait because there's not much going on except for this weekend and then mm-hmm. the weekend of the 30th and 31st when we have the Noah and All Japan shows. So yeah. uh, we'll see you then, and I hope you have a happy uh, start to your spring season. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. Take care. Hey now, it's Mike Gilbert, host of the Mike and JD Show, right here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Join JD by God Oliva and myself every Thursday night live on the Voices of Wrestling YouTube channel at 1130 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we stay up all night discussing all the hottest stories in professional wrestling. You can also check us out right here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting feed or you can subscribe to the Mike and JD Show feed. Now, enjoy the show.